And here it is. I can also link it to you guys in, in chat if you want it. Um, boom. Right. Just. Cam. Wow. Did you talk about the race to world first drama? Um, I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess we can talk about that right now. Why not? Yeah. Sure. Let's talk about the race to world first drama. <laughs> so, if you guys didn't know this, the race to world first happened. And every single time that the race to world first happens, people are mad. <laughs> True. Every once in a while, you have a race that's like a total blowout and nobody's mad. However, that's not what happened this time. How long did it take Echo after Liquid killed the boss? How many hours did it take Echo? Um, let's see what people are writing. Five to six hours, five to six. Uh, let's just double check that. How many hours it actually was. Raid IO. Um, Aberus, Raid Ranking. Can you see that? Field Commander, it was... 0122 Central European Summertime. They killed it. Okay. So it was like... From 8... To a little bit over. So it was like... Um, it was like 4.5 hours, right? 4.5 hours difference. Or was it five and a half? Was my math wrong? 1950, so like rounded up eight o'clock. And here it was 120. Yeah, it was okay. It was like five, five and a half. Five and a half hours. Okay. Yeah. Six hours. So. I can look at it from six to seven and 50 more pulls. Yeah. I can look at it from their perspective, and I can say this. NA had a head start advantage. And if you take the time from the beginning of the raid to whenever the last boss died, if Echo had a shorter time between whenever they began to raid on Mythic and whenever the boss died, I can absolutely see why Echo is upset. Obviously. Not this argument. Well, it's not an argument. It's just a fact. Getting a head start in a race gives you an advantage. Guys, uh, like, what are, what are we talking about here? Like, uh, of course it does. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, of course. This is what we tried to say. You know, like, of course it matters. I don't know why people would say it doesn't. Yeah, I also feel like that disregards the splits, though. What do you mean, disregards the splits? Well, hang on. If both teams do splits for three days and start at almost the same time, that head start isn't really there, right? I... No. Did someone just make that fucking argument? They're doing splits for free? Bro. That doesn't make sense. You are also using time on splits. Of course you do. And that was also one thing I said. For this race, I do 100% agree that when we look head-to-head, -head, and I think everyone, and the thing is, I am not biased towards my own team. We know when we do bad, when we do good, and we didn't feel like we played our best on the later bosses during this race. Honestly, I think Liquid did a bit better than us. But I think we did splits better, which is why we kind of caught up. We were very efficient with our splits and optimizing our gearing, which is why we kind of got into Mythic at the same time. But splits are part of the race and part of the speed in a rate tier. And this is where we did really good this time around. Um, you know, and that's kind of what like caught us up on time. But uh, we could definitely have done better on the mythic progress part. But the thing is, they're all combined. You know, they all add up into the, you know, the performance of the, of the race. <clears throat> Well, it still is because they're able to begin doing splits three hours earlier. Or sorry, eight or 12 hours. I, I don't know how long it takes. They're, they're able to start doing splits earlier. Like in, in any 
in any way that you explain it, having more time to do the raid is an advantage. I don't even understand why people are, are calling this into question. <laughs> I don't either. Okay, so the argument that people normally use is that, um, well, you can watch what NA is doing and then copy their strategies. And that makes us catch up on time. It's completely ridiculous. So if you watch someone that's ahead of you, you know, uh, 10 hours ahead of you doing a boss, and you watch them do, their bo do the boss in like a couple hours or whatever, and then you, okay, you take that strategy that they did, where do you get those 10 hours back? Yes, you will kill that boss faster than they did most likely, but you are not, you need to overtake them. You're not taking, you know, like, sure, you are going to be killing the boss a little bit faster, but you're still behind, you know? And that being said, that wasn't really the case this time around, because Liquid played to that advantage this time around, which is obviously something that everyone would do in their position. They did the smart thing. No one is blaming Liquid for doing what they need to do in order to win. It's not their fault there's no global release. Uh, they also want it, by the way. So it's not like uh, anyone's against this, but people saying that it's not an advantage is completely delusional. Like, that's just how it is. It is, will and always will be an advantage. The only case where that head start gets diminished is if Liquid is ahead, they get to a boss, and then that boss is completely overtuned. We have seen that in previous tiers as well. And they cannot progress. It's impossible to progress until it gets nerfed. Then they lose that head start. Sure, they will be doing like maybe some gearing, some M+, plus, some splits or whatever in that downtime. But it's most likely not going to be efficient splits and efficient gearing that they would have had to do otherwise, right? Like in, in that case, it sucks. But that was not this time around. And they did the smart thing. They got to Zagreb first, turned off stream, and we progressed um, throughout the day. And then we did some phase one. Phase two was a little bit of phase three. Then they woke up. Took some of that information, progress phase one and two really quickly, got to phase three, turned off streams again. So we couldn't take their uh, strats for phase three. Because trust me, if they didn't turn off stream that day and we got their phase three timings and strategy, there was actually a chance that we would have killed the boss before they woke up. So what they did was what they had to do in order to win and no one can blame them for it. Liquid played really good. I think they played the later Mythic bosses better than us. Definitely. I think, like I said, we did splits better. And no one is taking that away from them. They're a great team. And they push us every single time. And the race would not be the same without them. But I still do not understand why people cannot just see it for what it is. It will and always will be an advantage when you start ahead of another team in any race. And that's not being a salty loser or whatever. It's just how it is. And it sucks, you know. We have talked about going NA many times, but there's also some logistical problems going on NA servers for us. And it sucks that we have to. Um, so, of course, we will try and advocate for, to, for European players and a European player base to get the games, not just in Europe, by the way, but also the Asian community that are waiting even longer than us. They get the game two days after NA. You know, you have guilds like Skyline and stuff that are doing really good, but they will have no chance of competing because they start two days after the other guilds which is crazy. <clears throat> um, we just want to be able to play the game whenever it comes out. And I think not just for hardcore players, but for many uh, players in general that are not playing on NA will just love to play a new patch instantly instead of watching other people play. I think it would just be a positive uh, change to the game in general. <clears throat> yeah, let's continue. <clears throat> like... Like, what the fuck are we- what are we talking about here? Obviously, it's more of an advantage. Liquid gets to do splits a day earlier, so they start Mythic a day earlier. Genji's freaking out about it on Twitter. I don't think freaking out about it is the right mada, word, mada. okay? <laughs> do people think I'm sitting like, writing on front of Twitter? Bro, I'm calm, I'm just writing this, and then some guy is writing Shut the fuck up, uh, you fat fuck, in my comments. And I'm just sitting there like... What? Like, these are the comments I get. 
uh, people are like spraying uh, salt bake gifts and shit like that, and I'm supposed to take this thing serious? No, I, there's there's so many trolls, dude, and I cannot write anything after losing without people saying like I'm just a bad loser, and it you know, and then people saying yeah you're not talking about this when you won blah blah blah. Yes, we do. You just don't listen. You only listen when we then finally lose and we talk about it. Then. Oh, you're a bad loser. It gets attention, gets negative attention. When it's negative attention, it's drama. People love drama. It gets more attention. And that's when people finally listen and realize that we're talking about it. But we talk about it every single time. Win or lose, it would be better for the game. <clears throat> but yeah, let's... I think he's just talking about it. Yeah, he's probably pissed off that he lost. Yeah. <laughs> I was? <laughs> Fucking sucks. Definitely. Um, like, I would be too. That's fine. Like, and, and... How do you guys... How do you guys see it? Because... Liquid killed the boss first. This is an objective fact. They did kill the boss first. Mm. But Echo killed it with less time in the raid. I think that, like, there is... I, I think this is, it's just such a toxic environment. And I don't know why they can't do a global release. Same. I, I really don't understand that. Why can't they just do that? They watch Liquid Strats, which makes them faster. <laughs> stop it. Stop it, Rod. Stop. <laughs> stop it. Okay, the only time that that kind of mattered in this progress tier was uh, like Skarn. You know, we, we got some good information from them on Skarn and whatnot. Uh, you know, of course you get some timings as well on some of the earlier bosses, but the early bosses this time around died so quickly. And on Echo of Nilfarion, we gave them information in Phase 1 and uh, Phase 2, and then they progressed past us and got Phase 3, and we got some information from them from Phase 3. We always have this back and forth, and we had this back and forth uh, throughout the race this time around. Uh, after we caught up on, on Echo of Nilfarion, right? They were ahead until Echo of Nilfarion, and we uh, got some progress because we killed Magmarex, uh, like, in the middle of our progress day, where they have killed it maybe on, um, like, late at night. And the same thing happened on Sagaref, where um, they got to Sagaref first, but they did it late in the night, so they turned off stream not to give anything away. Of course, we did the same thing in Castle Nafria back then um, because we didn't want to, you know, throw away a potential of winning. Um, especially if it's late at night, it's not that many hours not being streamed. Uh, but it was late at night, so they didn't play so much. We got to Sakharev in the middle of the day, so we were the first guild that streamed it. Um, and then we progressed past them on Sakharev, got some Phase 2 and a Phase 1 uh, information strats going, and then we saw a little bit of Phase 3. Then we decided to take an early night because in our head at that timing we want to wake up we want to see what they have done in phase 3 and then overtake them. But then they did a smart move and then they turned off stream when they got to phase 3 um, because they didn't want to give us anything. Now all of a sudden we couldn't take the strategies back. And like I said earlier, if they didn't do that there would probably be a high chance they would have killed the boss before they woke up. So they did some off stream pulls, they went to bed they woke up four hours later. You can see that they were very thirsty for the win. You know, they did everything to win. They cut sleep towards the end of the day because they went for the kill on the last day. So I don't know what people are saying, like, that we took strategies from them. The only thing, like, we really got that mattered and saved us a little bit of time was, like, okay, Magmarex was such a short boss that it didn't matter. It was such an easy boss. Garn, we got some information that might have saved us a couple pulls as well. Um... But on Echo of Nilfarion and Sakharev, there wasn't really anything um, that, we, that we gained from them. Like, the last phase was so, so easy, and we had already pre-planned, like, uh, the strategies on Echo of Nilfarion. We didn't have the same Uyghur that they had with the map. By the way, that Uyghur was really insane, the Liquid had. We already had made the pre-positions uh, before that we had already practiced on PTR um, and mapped out. And... Yeah, exactly. The last phase was just 
we did it differently than them, by the way. We didn't use Bloodlust in phase one, which I think waste, I think using Bloodlust in phase one, you didn't need it. Uh, so we just needed, we lost it phase three, and then the boss just died uh, immediately. It was such an easy boss, uh, the last phase in Nolfarian. And then on Saka Ref, like we said, we didn't gain anything from them on Saka Ref, really. <clears throat> There's only some small things in phase two, I believe, we took from them. Um, but besides that, the thing that mattered was the phase three, and we had to come up with that ourselves because there was no streams. So, yes, we, of course, be starting uh, behind, you take the information that you have in front of you, but then the argument is this, what do you think you learn most from? Do you think you learn from playing? Or do you think you learn more from watching someone play? Of course, it's always better to be able to play. But when you're starting behind, you always want to try and catch up as much as you can. So you, you will, of course, take as much information you can from the guilds that are playing in front of you to try and speed up and close that gap. We need to do everything on our power in order to do that. Um, but towards the later fights, we didn't have any of this. At all. <clears throat> but yeah, let's continue. I do think that that does play a, play a role, but let's be honest, guys. Everybody said this raid tier was really easy. How much time did they really save? Like three pulls? Five pulls on these early exactly. bosses? Exactly. It was early bosses. They probably rolled them over. Yeah. It didn't matter too much because it was easy early bosses. Actually, like, the Asmogol has some really good takes. Like, he just understands it for what it is, and nice to hear. So, not true. Uh, Liquid uh, went dark for Sark. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, exactly. They went, exactly. Someone is uh, counter-arguing the guy saying that we see the strats. They went dark. So, what strats should we take? Watching it isn't the same as having hands-on. Yeah, I think that's true, too. Echo mods time out. People who said... Uh, OTKPCs, but to say Starforge was allowed? Well, yeah, because it's Starforge, not OTKPCs. I think that's kind of fair, right? Um, <laughs> do you think that the uh, first guild to the boss gets an advantage, or do you think the guild that gets to watch the first guild figure it out gets a bigger advantage? There is... There is no universe. Yeah, what? What the fuck, dude? Someone literally said that it's a bigger advantage. So imagine someone starts 10 hours ahead of you, right? Think about it like this. I'm going to put it very simple. You guys out there are competing with your friends, right? You're, you're, a group of ten, you're a group of friends. You're 10 people. You split into five. And you guys are competing to see who can get the Keystone Master achievement first. One team starts 10 hours ahead. And the other team starts 10 hours later. And you're all streaming this. So the people that is waiting 10 hours, you guys can watch the other team play. Who do you think gets Keystone Master first? You think it is in any world an advantage to be able to watch your friend do the dungeon? You think you will randomly overtake them because you can watch them do a Uldaman? And see the route that they're doing? Like, of course not. You're just trying to catch up. You might save a little bit of time. You might, like, um, not make some of the same mistakes that they did, but... They're sitting there progressing, while the only thing you can do is prepare. And plus, it's vastly, no, but it, it, it's, you shouldn't look at it from M plus. It's just about coming up with a strategy, a route, and then executing it. The people that are starting after will, of course, be able to do it more efficiently and save more time than the guild in front. But if the content is easy, okay, listen, if the content is easy, the time saved will be little to nothing. If the boss is hard, very technical, you save a lot more time. The thing is with this tier is that the bosses that we gained strategies from Liquid were super easy bosses. And the two bosses that were qualified as the hardest bosses for this tier, we were progressing ahead of Liquid on both Sakur on stream, on Sakuref and Nilfarian. Except for the last phase of Nilfarian, which is, you know, they killed the boss before us, but we progressed phase one and two, then they did it on Nilfarian afterwards, and then they overtook us, right? Um, same thing with Sakaref. They overtook us, and then they went off stream. So there was no back and forth. So the bosses where we could actually gain something from it, 
we didn't have it. And that's how this tier went. <clears throat> In which being able to watch somebody is better than being able to do it yourself. You are right that you're comparing two unequal advantages, but one advantage is way better than the other. It's like you're comparing a plus 10% versus a plus 50%. Is plus 10% good? Absolutely. But it's not better than plus 50. And would you ever trade plus 50 and plus 10? Absolutely not. Definitely not. Liquid 100% has an advantage, but it's complicated. It is complicated, and that complication creates toxicity. Should Blizzard do global release? I don't know why they don't just invite the top five guilds to do a PTR that's all at the same time. I think it's worth it to Blizzard to do this. They should invite the top five guilds to do a PTR, give them a baseline of like normal mode gear, and then say, if you want to do splits for heroic gear, you can do it. And everything else is totally up to you. The reality is that the race to world first is the biggest advertising that Blizzard has for World of Warcraft retail. It is the Yeah, it's massive. And it's free advertising, by the way. They don't pay a dime. One of the most streamed events on Twitch. And, you know, I'm sure they'll make tons of money. Like, they can even time, like, uh, you know a discount to, like, returning people, like, um... Because I'm sure there's, they get a lot of resubscribers doing the race. They can have an in-game shop mount as well popping up, like, race the world first, a promo discount, I don't know, they can do so much to make money from, from things like this. Crazy. Um... <clears throat> and... The thing is, it's not... And this is also important, they shouldn't tailor... Of course it's nice if they have us in the back of their heads when they're creating some things, because yeah, I think for any good game, there also needs to be some competitiveness to it, right? You shouldn't cater to the professionals and like the top players only, but I think it's important for a game to be successful that there is some kind of competitive uh, thing in the game that people can strive for, right? Um, and push towards. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why Implos and Implos score in general has been so popular in the game. But I think just for the general player base that plays on EU and on uh, the Asian servers, they will just like to be able to play the game whenever it gets released. When a new patch comes out, being able to log on and play it, everyone is hyped about a new expansion. They do global release there. People love it. Like people, I mean, now we just go on the battle and launch and we download the game already and we can just log on. But like back in the day, classic TPC. People were sitting out in front of the stores in queues to just be able to buy like the new expansion when it came out. And you had these like five different discs you would be putting in and people were hyped. They were taking days off school, work, things like that. It was super hype. You know, like it's just nice to be able to play the game whenever it like comes out. And, you know, it's just it's just hype. You're excited to play uh, the new patches, the new raids, the new plus, whatever it is that you like, get the new mounts. It doesn't really matter. It just sucks to watch someone play when it's out. And uh, so I don't think it's just something for the Race of Wars first players. I think it's just something that would benefit like every European that plays the game, every Asian player that plays the game. And we wouldn't be forced to go away from like all of the things that we've gained on the European service, our communities and things like that. All the just logistical issues with having a venue that might have to be in America, uh, like to not have uh, latency issues, you know, play with high ping um, when you're just sitting at home, things like that. Um, going away from like all the friends and everything on Europe. Uh, it's just, it sucks if you would have to do that to be competitive in the race that was first. Of course, you, we can be competitive without moving to NA, which is what we have, but it just sucks, uh, you know, <clears throat> not... Because the Race for First, like I said, it's, been, it's grown into something so big and we love doing it. It's one of the most enjoyable parts of the game for us. And we want to continue to play in it, you know? Um, we just want to be able to do it um, on an even level. <clears throat> Thank you.
biggest and it is not even remotely close. We support the race to world first. Starforge sponsors it every single fucking time. We sponsored Echo this time, last time, and I think the time before as well. I know the last two times for sure. The truth is that I think this is a great event. It is a tremendous, massive event that allows these guys that want to play the game professionally th the ability to do it. And I don't understand why Blizzard can't just do the absolute minimum and spin up a tournament realm that releases later on. Because here's the truth. If all of the guilds were able to compete on that tournament realm that would start, <laughs> let's say, 12 hours at the exact same time for everybody, I think all of the NA guilds would cooperate with that. <clears throat> I mean, the tournament realm would be if, like, Blizzard was really against making a global release for whatever reason but i've yet to hear a good argument for why a global release is a bad thing i think any reasoning that i've heard is something that americans uh that plays on na servers that works for blizzard that puts uh, uh things that they know what we want I've yet to heard of like a really good argument for why we shouldn't have global release. Like a European player that like honestly thinks that waiting for the game and is out for any reason would be a good thing. Like why would it be a good thing to wait for the game like a full day? <clears throat> Time zone is the reason. Time zones. Okay, so right now, think about it like this. Right now, for a, let's say, a casual player that doesn't do it for a living, the game comes out right now on 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. That's when the reset is. That person will most likely go to work or school, come back from work or in the afternoon, right? He expects from work at around 4 o'clock. Then he can log on and play the game. If you played around the NA reset, you would be able to come home from work that afternoon, go onto your PC, and then one hour later, the new patch would come out. You, as a normal 9 to 5 worker, would be able to play the patch the same second it came out as a casual player. Isn't this way cooler? I think that is way better. The only thing that you could say is like that might cause problems is like if the reset is like uh, in the evening. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the NA reset right now, how would that be for current European server time? Like what would it uh, look like? What time is it here uh, when it's NA re server reset? <clears throat> Is it the uh, 1700, 1800? Something like that, right? <clears throat> okay, it's 1900. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, then I have another question. When do you guys usually rate with your guild? You're probably pushing the rate back to the server restart. So let's say there's a server reset at 7 you'd probably start rating at 7, right? And I think it's around, around there anyway that most players start playing in the first place. So I don't think it would be an unnatural thing to have a server reset around 7, where I believe 7 uh, is, is a good time for a, you know, a, a standard guild that raids maybe 3 times per week that usually starts raiding anyway. So it's, it's a great time. You guys can raid as soon as the reset is out at 7 o'clock. It's like, I don't think it would interfere negatively with that many players. Sure, there would be some guilds that would have to swap around, maybe change the schedule a little bit, but overall, I think it would be not a negative thing for the game. <clears throat> People don't rate before 7 p.m. Yeah, I don't think so either. 
you know, I, I think seven is uh, is like a very standard time to raid. <clears throat> the fair point still wouldn't be perfect, but it would be better. Exactly. I think it will always it will be impossible to find something that is perfect and that everyone finds perfect. You cannot cannot make everyone in the world happy. It just doesn't work like that. But I think it would be an improvement regardless. For like I, you know, I cannot put words into people's mouth. You know, we're just having sitting here having a discussion, but I believe that people would be generally more happy to be able to play the game on new patch as soon as it comes out. And this and the change in the reset times for Europe. Um I don't think would affect people too negatively to the point where they couldn't make couple swaps in, you know, when they're raiding and things like that to fit the new schedule. That being said, it does we don't necessarily have to exactly go off the current NA reset uh, and switch it over to those times. You could find a middle ground, right? Would it, let's say the NA reset will be like pushed back one, two hours uh, earlier and then you would do the same thing with the EU reset, let's say. You, know, you, you could make some small adjustments that wouldn't affect it too much by like an hour here, hour there to match like a global release um, if they really wanted to. <clears throat> Just want to make sure you don't affect the game in a negative way in any way or as little as possible in order to implement something like this. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. The, the reset needs to match the work at Blizzard. I mean, again, it... That's also what we looked at, right? It it doesn't need to change. But uh, it could maybe adjust an hour here, an hour there. I don't think it would impact too much. See here, they can't have maintenance midday in EU. That's a lot of... Uh, People not able to play the game. What do you mean maintenance midday? It's not maintenance midday. It's maintenance uh, evening. It's when people are back home. If it if it matches the NA reset, pick it would be around the what was it like seven o'clock that uh, there would be a reset, which is the time that I think the average guild uh, starts raiding anyway. So they would be able to raid whenever the raid comes out. Um, <clears throat> the only thing is that if a reset and a new patch comes out at 7 o'clock. There would be a lot of server issues because I think around 7 o'clock, let's say a new patch comes out at 7 in the evening, you know, there would be a lot of players playing. <laughs> it would be like peak hours for, for Europe, right? Um, there would be a lot of people online. But it would be freaking cool. It would give this epic feeling of like new patch, Everyone is hyped, everyone is on, everyone is playing, and you just see like a th thousands of people uh, in Valdraken or whatever jumping into the new raid, doing, what, like, doing the new world boss, things like that. It would be kind of an epic feeling. <clears throat> Almost like a new uh, expansion release, and it would feel like that every single time. Then half of your guild sits in queue and lags. Well, I don't know about queue. I have never had a queue on a patch day. Queue is something for global release. Of course, a new patch brings in a lot of players again and a lot of hype. But it's not like new expansion release type traffic. I don't think people would have massive queues uh, on a patch day. Or at least not long ones. <clears throat> So you would stream with all night with zero EU viewers. Um, zero European viewers. I don't believe that that's the case. Yes, if there is a race towards first and we're matching our play for the EU reset, we would be playing in the middle of the night. That would happen. Uh, would that affect some traffic from Europe? I mean, it probably would. But we have pushed late into the night, uh, at like 1, 2 o'clock before. 
and the viewership was still 70,000 plus on the Echo main channel. The viewership would still be there. Um, and yeah, you are doing uh, certain times of the, of the, of the play, uh, Europeans would sleep. You could say for the Race of Wars first uh, viewership, um, it would affect some European viewers a bit. I mean, it would. This global release and we play around NA times, it would. Um, but it's better than the alternative. Because look at it about like this, okay? So if we're just talking about viewer experience, yes, viewer times for Europeans, it would affect them in a negative way. But think about it like this. When was the Race of Wolves first the most hype? Was it when you were watching Castle Nafria, Side and Nafrius, and both guilds were getting like uh, low percentage wipes? Like, if, you know, both guilds around 3%. You're seeing this back and forth. You don't know who's going to win. Same about this time as Sakharev. Liquid had not killed Sagaref yet, and we get a 6% wipe. All of a sudden, the race is on. You guys thought Liquid got this in the back, and then all of a sudden, we get a 6% out of nowhere, and people are like, holy shit. You guys will be seeing this, not this back and forth, taking strategies one guild ahead of the other, back and forth constantly. You would see two guilds going at it, head to head. You see, uh, probably, since both guilds are really good, you'll be seeing a close race. You're not sure who's ahead, who's in front. You see low percentage wipe from both kills. You will have this dynamic throughout the race all the time. And I think from a viewer experience, it will make the race a lot more interesting. Now people are always like, hmm, who's ahead? Ah, but it's Liquid ahead. I mean, sure, they have better percentage, but, uh, you know, Echo started like, uh, they just started their day, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, you have to like, unless you're really into the race to world first and have a great understanding, you're not really sure who's ahead or not, who's, who's not ahead, like, who's ahead and who's behind. Because you have these external factors in the, in the competition that you need to also add, add into the calculations when you're thinking about who's in front and who's not. If it's just a head-to-head -head race, everyone starts at the same time, there's absolutely nothing you can say. You know exactly who's ahead and who's not. And it's just way better from like a viewer experience, way easier to understand um, from a new viewer that's not into the race that was first and been watching them a lot. Uh, and it's just, for the general viewer, it's just a lot easier to watch that way. And a lot more enjoyable to watch that way. <clears throat> have you advocated for that when you're winning? Yes. We have been saying global release every single time. Every single time. Win, lose. We have, been ever, like, we have been asking for global release since I don't know how many years back. I can link you a tweet of you asking for global release from 2020. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we have asked for it a long time. And that this also, like, we have been thinking and talking about, like, going to NA servers. There's also a lot of problems when going to NA when you are, everyone lives in, in the EU, you know, of course there is. <clears throat> so, and, and it would only be for the race towards first, you know, and we also have people like plays high keys, you know, the streams on a regular basis, you know, that want to place on European times as well. Like imagine you're a European player, you're streaming and playing on European times, and then you're on an NA server. You'll be playing super scuffed hours as well, by the way. Might not have, to, like, I love turning on my stream. Um, I turn, you know, I put it in the finder, we get a group going, we do a viewer rate, things like that. Like, also, a lot of those things will also be taken away. Um, I mean, I'm sure I would be able to do a viewer rate and stuff like that in NA as well, but like, you know, when you've built something, on like a, a platform or a community in the in, in EU and then all of a sudden we're gonna go over to NA, you know, it sad giving up those things um as well. You know, we have a lot of people um also just people that place in plus in general, I think there's a lot more to uh, to choose from on, on Europe than there is in in NA as well. <clears throat> Wouldn't splits be more difficult for you? you have to play in nighttime. I don't think splits is a problem anymore with the new loot system. 
to be honest. Um, I think splits will be usually fine. There's uh, a lot of people that always signs up for the splits. And honestly, the funny thing is that uh, most of the helpers that help with the race was first. I don't know what you guys are doing. You guys could tell me in the chat. Do you guys take time off, vacation time, new patches or something? Or do you just say, fuck it, I'm not going to go to school this week? I don't know. But the thing is, people are there whenever we need them. Almost like they do this for a living. <laughs> like, it's crazy. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter, dude. <laughs> or maybe they're just living at home and, uh, you know, I don't know. Or they work from home and they're just like, fuck it, I'm going to do the work later today. Like... It's hard to say, but it just seems like it doesn't really matter. There's just always people. I quit my job and you didn't pick my application. Okay. <laughs> All right, relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's continue the video. <clears throat> Because they don't want to have to deal with the toxicity. Because if Blizzard put a tournament realm up, and then the NA guild said, oh, well, we're not going to use the tournament realm. We want to use our own realm. Uh, then it's obvious that they're doing it because they want an advantage, and it just completely delegitimizes their achievement. So they would go and play it on a tournament realm. It would make it completely fucking fair. Exactly. It sucks for both, by the way. Liquid wins. It's a close race. People will always like take a wave from their victory, ah, but you only won because of global re it was no global release, you got a head start, blah, blah, blah. That also sucks for them, you know? And equally, it sucks from, for us that we're starting behind every time. And this, like, like Asmund says, this is what builds the toxicity because there's no, like, there's no obvious winner in a close race like this. Because you don't know how much the, the head start or the non-global release affected the race. And that sucks. And that's what makes people argue. This is what makes people be toxic on, on, on Twitter and things like that. Um, and have these heated arguments. But it sucks for the race that, uh, that it is like this. <clears throat> fucking fair and with a race to world first like let's look at how many uh well actually i i, I don't really want to try to figure that out but like there are effectively millions of people that are playing on uh that, that are watching this race to world first if you're telling me that blizzard doesn't have the resources or the time to make a tournament realm for the top five or top ten guilds and allow them to make pre-made characters, have like a two or three people for this. It's not worth it for Blizzard, they'll never make the race an official event. I think it is worth it to Blizzard. I think that it is massively worth it to Blizzard. And do you wanna know- I think it's worth it as well, like because the event is so fucking massive. But that being said, Aspen is talking about a tournament room. And I think tournament room would be the, let's say the safest thing for Blizzard, if they wanted to take the safe way out to the point where it would not affect any of the player base in any way whatsoever. This would not be my dream scenario, by the way. I think, apart from the splits, so this is, we can also talk about the fact that I don't think that you should mash Heroic and Mythic uh, into like the same week of content release. I like the Heroic week into Mythic week. That being said, I don't think they should time gate or cap and plus in the Heroic Week. That's what they did in the past. That's what I think the most players were unhappy about is that they couldn't push keys uh, and the gear was capped. But mashing Heroic and Mythic into one week, I don't think that's a positive thing because people are not going to jump into Mythic before they have done the Heroics and the Normals that have gotten gear, they've gone into Implos and that's when they can start progressing Mythic. I think it's a way more natural progression to... Get Mythic Plus, get Heroic, you know, do the new raid, get some gear, and then Mythic opens up the following week. You already prepared yourself a little bit, you got some gear, you saw some of the bosses, and you're ready for Mythic raiding. And then you step in uh, to Mythic raiding with your guild the following week. I think that's a way more natural thing without sending, like, it's also a lot of content. 
you have to do normals, heroics, and plus, and then mythic rating as well. Like, it's, it's crazy how much, it's too much content in one week, in my opinion. <clears throat> it will also be better from a view experience as well, uh, in the race was first, that the people that don't care about splits, well, thankfully for you, in heroic week, there's just going to be gearing and splits, and you can look forward to the mythic rate starting uh, on, the, on the next reset. And you'll be watching a lot more mythic progression there, which is great. <sighs> I also think that when it comes to tuning, it will be a lot easier to adjust bosses based on the numbers that they see in the heroic rates on the previous week and tune bosses accordingly. Um, based on the numbers that they see there. So they don't have anything under-tuned, over-tuned, and they can tune it how they see fit the game. Speaking about tuning, this is something that I've also seen a lot that people talk about. The tuning of this rate here. Some people saying that the tuning is great. Some people saying that it's too easy. Um, where do you guys see this tier? I personally think it was too easy. But that being said, I think it's better than an overtuned boss where you go in and it's just unkillable and it requires nerfs. I think that the new upgrade system was a bit too powerful compared to what Blizzard thought with like having 10 Aspect Crest, 10 Worm Crest, crafted items and whatnot. Uh, very easy to get 4 set bonuses as well with the new tokens and things like that. You were just so powerful. Do you guys think that when a Mythic Ray comes out, and this is obviously going to be a lot more accessible to the general player base because the raid is a lot easier and the gearing is a lot easier as well. But being able to kill a retail boss, end boss, in just three days of progress. I think that's when it becomes too easy. Things like Sepulchre was too hard, though. But I still don't think that an end boss should be killable by, like, most skills in the first or second reset. I think it's fine to be able to like get some gear, strive to kill the like the last boss in the raid, and then you know progress towards that. And maybe for most skills, take like a month, a month and a half, you know, of progressing. But I also think that it's great that they don't have to adjust bosses, nerf them, and change them. Uh, that also sucks, right? Like you saw things like Painsmith, Helandris, bosses that was like really hard and technical. They just ripped those apart. Kind of sad as well, in one way. But I think this time around it's a little bit too easy. Sepulchre was too hard. They need to find it like an in-betweener. That, that would be my opinion. <clears throat> you see, I don't agree. Having to keep uh, 20 people for three, two months, it's hard. Now you only need people for one and a half months. <clears throat> but here is what we uh, we go back to. Do you think that clearing a full mythic rate, the hardest content in the game, should be accessible for everyone? This is what heroic and stuff is for. Should the hardest content in any game be easy? Doesn't that take away from the accomplishment and the prestige of actually doing it in the first place? Think about the nerd screams that... Think about your most memorable kill. The one you worked the hardest for. And then when you finally killed it. The feeling you had from that boss kill. You will never ever have that again. If you just need a strategy, some gear, and then 30 pulls to kill it. And I'm not saying they should tune every single boss like that. They can have some loot pinatas that you can go in and smack every single week and get your gear and whatnot. But for like the hardest bosses in the game, should they be accessible to everyone? What's the cool shit in that? That's my opinion on it. <laughs> Let's see, maybe great hardest content, maybe when you do it with low gear and pre nerfs. Exactly. I'm not saying that they should tune it for, uh, for World's First Raiders. What I just want is the bosses to be hard in the first one to two weeks 
when your item level is way lower and is only really hard when you're actually trying to kill the boss in the first uh, one or two resets. The bosses gets automatically easier and nerfed for every single reset of gear that you get. So the bosses gets easier and easier automatically from just gear upgrades. But if the bosses are just tuned so that they're really hard with reset 1 or reset 2 gear, it will not affect any player except for like the top guilds. And then the race is still really amazing. That's the kind of balancing that I think would be great for the game. So when people get more and more gear, they're not running into like a crazy wall like Halundras or some shit that like kills guilds off. But it's also not a, a boss that dies in three days. Like a full mythic raid week one, guys. This is what I'm saying. Week one, when your gear is the lowest it possibly can be, you kill it in three days of mythic progress. That's the tuning I don't want. But of course the raid will get easier, like I said, with like just more resets of gear. And that's when, you know, um, the general player base can progress these fights and kill them without them requiring crazy nerfs. And I think that's the in-between balancing that I think is perfect for the game. <laughs> Your low versus our low is different? Yeah, it is, because you gotta remember that we have a lot of tools um, in order to, like, not every guild has access to helpers and uh, split rates and stuff like that. So our item level is obviously higher compared to the standard player base. Normally. The only difference this time around is that uh, we had, you know, of course, we could target trinkets and things like that from the raid. But with the new upgrade system and people being able to just farm and plus and use 10 aspect crests, 10 worm crests, even players that aren't raiding mythic, they have like 440 item level now. When week two, and you've had 20 crests of each aspect and worm, you have two crafted items, 447. People are getting close to 440 item level. You have like the same gear as like uh, mythic raiders. You might not have the mythic trinket that you want or something like that. Uh, or maybe you don't have the Sakharev weapon, but we're talking three item levels difference on a weapon compared to the hardest boss in the game, supposedly. It's only three item levels higher than you going and do uh, an M plus 17 and then going down to the work order and paying 10k gold. You have three items of level less than that on your weapon. So the difference is not that big right now. <laughs> don't shit on the system don't take it the wrong way I think this system is great it is a lot easier to gear now getting your character like you can get a character ready with really fucking good gear to the point where you said damn I can go and push him in plus now my character is, is like ready there's not much more I can do you can prepare your old character you can like do the content that you actually want to play without feeling like you're behind on gear because you didn't clear mythic raids. You can play the game as a heroic raider and only do in plus if that's what you want. I think the new gearing system is amazing. Don't get me wrong. I just think they underestimated how strong it was when they tuned the bosses. So I think it should just, the rate should be tuned a little bit higher um, than it is now. That's it. <clears throat> well, let's continue the video. You know why I think that? I think that because companies literally pay tens and hundreds of millions of dollars to pay streamers to play their game and they add drops to their game to get more people to watch streamers because streamers with high viewer accounts increases their direct replacement, which increases the marketing potential for their game. That's why drops exist.
but they do that without Blizzard intervention? They do. They absolutely do. But the race being a, a, a community event, and I think it's good for it to be a community event. I'm not saying this should change a whole lot. I'm saying just set up a, uh, a, a tournament realm. Like, what is the <laughs> logic in having a tournament realm for the AWC that is lucky if it gets 10,000 views and not having a tournament realm for the race to world first that is just, like, fucking astronomically way more? Like, it, it just it doesn't make any sense. Will they use splits with on the tournament realm then? I don't know. They can figure it out. I mean, that is true, right? Like they're saying, some people are saying, okay, it's not worth uh, like intervent interventing and stuff like that. Like the race was first is the biggest wow event right now, right? Bigger than MDI, bigger than the Great Push, bigger than the AWC. That being said, um, with now with the watch parties and stuff like that, uh, the, the MDI has actually grown be really big um i don't exactly remember the numbers but i do think that it was like close to it was between 70 to 100 ccv uh, during the time when like the main channel was on also bear in mind that they're coast they're streaming this on twitch and youtube so the main channel was streaming on twitch and youtube uh you had myself you had max you had dorky yumi a lot of other streamers i remember smock and now was also doing a bit uh, Petco and Agura, like there's a lot of streamers that was like co-streaming the MDI, uh, which made it so that the overall viewership was like really high, <clears throat> um, which is great. I don't know if AWC was not up there. I know that AWC has like been dipping a bit in viewership, unfortunately. I'm not sure if that's like a, the reason is like the current PP system. You know, I, I was uh, Raikou and, and Was was also at the race it was first. Um, cool to meet up with them, with those guys, but. Maybe there's some PP players in the chat that just feels like the PP system right now maybe not as cool as it was. I think solo shuffle, I've heard good things about. Apart if you're not a healer, the queues are really slow. Um, but like PV3 arena and ladder, it's just not that cool anymore. From my understanding, is what I from what I've heard. Um, there's also <clears throat> what's it called? Something that. Blizzard um, have like talked about as well, and I think that maybe you guys can say what you think um, is to maybe have a player give their POVs to Blizzard that they can use to showcase um, the runs. So instead of having this broadcast the POV, you are gonna have a um, you can actually watch the players play from their POVs instead. And you can swap between that. I think that would be way better, viewer perspective, um, than having this broadcast POV flying around. Um, that being said, there's one thing that could be confusing, of course, and that would be that different players have different UIs, um, and there might be information on different screens in different places which might be hard for like new players that aren't really, uh, you know, that are new at the game or something like that uh, to understand everything. I guess that would be like the only thing you could argue against um, for a UI like that. But I would love that from a viewer myself. It would be a lot easier for me to, uh, to watch and understand what's going on and enjoy it more. <clears throat> The race world first uses player perspective and it seems to work fine, even with the chaos of raid UI. Exactly. I think it would be better as well. Is that too complicated? No, it's not complicated at all. Um, actually, it would be very, very easy. You would just be broadcasting to... Um, you literally just... They give you a stream key or something like that. Um, you just plug that in. You just duplicate your profile or something like that uh, on OBS. And then you just press start streaming. And then you stream to their POV that they can then uh, put into their broadcast uh, and showcase whenever they want. And they literally just have like an Elgato stream deck or whatever. And then they have different scenes and you just press on a button. Okay, now Echo pops up. Something like that. You know, like it's just, it's, it's, it's really easy to do. <clears throat>
Let's see. In the Echo Uyghur add-on, some Uyghurs are listed as private hours. Something I have to change the settings. Oh, you mean, uh, I, did you download the new Echo Uyghurs that got uh, published? So pr private hours are things that are uh, blocked by Blizzard. These are things that they don't want you to make Uyghurs from. You probably saw it from like Echo of Nilfarion mainly with the heart debuff. So what people did is that they made this nice um, like bar um, and to the side of that is pretty much taking information from the rate frames uh, and it would just show, okay, this guy got the heart debuff and then just showed an icon to the right of it. And then what the top guilds had was that they had a number system. So let's say that I'm at the top of the list and then you are number two on the list and then there below you uh, is, um, let's just use, like Liquid is third on the list. So you have Echo top, Twitch chat in the middle and uh, Seam Liquid at number three. Then you have these different positions uh, that you would go to depending on uh, what hard position you had. Because you are always at the same part of the list, you might have to only remember one, two. In some cases, if you're in the middle of the list, maybe three different hard positions. And then based on the, of what number of the list of debuff you're in, so you put this bar close to you, you can also choose to have this bar not show um, above, let's say, 10 players. Let's say you're number five in the list. Um, you don't need to show more than five in order to understand where you need to go. So you limit the bar to five people and then you see, okay, so there's two people in front of me. That means that I'm number three. So I go to hard position number three. And that's when I, that's where I go. So this was kind of the system you used for the hard debuffs. Um, on Nilfarian. <clears throat> and that's because you couldn't make a weaker. Like when you get the debuff, boom, then you get a weaker that tells you exactly where to go. So you have to go around the, the weaker, like... You couldn't do a normal regard, so because Blizzard had blocked it, if that makes sense. <clears throat> but let's they continue the video. Splits anyway. Blizzard needs a W right now, and I just I don't see why they don't do that, because if they do that, like it doesn't affect any other player. It doesn't do anything. Like, how, how does this hurt the game? It doesn't do anything. I don't get it. So, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe like, listen. Like, maybe Dorky's right. Uh, you, you know, like, if Max or Scribe have insight on it, they probably understand it better than I do. But, or any of these guys. But, from my perspective, I think that you're always going to have, personally, be great for the players, like me. Wouldn't have to do these degenerate splits and farm. I think Max has a better read on it. Yeah, I mean, maybe he has a better insight on it. I'd be curious to hear what he has to say. But, I mean, the truth is, it is a community event. But look at Blizzard mm. trying to inv in invest into Hardcore WoW. Hardcore WoW was a community event, too. And you know what Blizzard did? They said, wow, this is going really well. It's getting us a lot of attention. It's getting people to play our game. Let's go ahead and invest into this and make a server for it. So how are you yeah. going to tell me that Hardcore WoW isn't worth it's it? Or sorry, is worth it whenever the race to world first is. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Kids forgot it. But it is true though. Like they were so quick at like uh, doing things like seasonal mastery and stuff like that for like hardcore classic. And the race towards first has shown. So the thing is, this is something with like uh, hype, right? You see it like same with Among Us and stuff like that. Uh, there's so many things that has huge hype and then it kind of dies out. Happens often. Hardcore classic like that, who knows? Maybe it's here to stay. We don't know. But the Race of Wars First has shown consistent results and success every single time. Dating all the way back from the first Race of Wars First in, in uh, EFA Uldir. That is like two expansions ago. We're in Dragonflight now. In all of Shadowlands, all of BFA, it has shown amazing viewership and it's here to stay. When is the time to like step in and say, okay, let's do something for the race? Hardcore Classic, and I'm super like, uh, I think it's good that there's something like that. Um, it's actually really cool to see the Hardcore Classic is popping off like it is. But it's been popping off for maybe two months <laughs> and they're already getting something, you know? So, I agree there. 
tournament realm would be weird because people really care about it uh uh when there's still the live realm world first i don't think it would really matter that much and also like they could always do i think the best case scenario is a global release the second best case scenario is a tournament realm yeah exactly like uh as michael said this would also be my preference global release would come in as number one i think that would be best I don't want to play in a tournament room unless I absolutely have to. I'm a little bit maybe different than other players. Honestly, I would love if the splits weren't there. A perfect scenario. We go back to heroic week into mythic week. Then the splits are a little bit more, you know, I don't mind them as much doing heroic splits when mythic is out. That like kind of sucks a little bit. Um, I would like to have a heroic raid uh, first and then go into mythic week two. Um, without M plus being uncapped. That would be my dream scenario. But that being said, as a player, as an officer, I think it's very overwhelming with all the things that they're doing behind the scenes. I wouldn't be able to do that. But as a player, I don't mind grinding, preparing my characters, doing split rates and stuff like that. All of those things, they're necessary evils, but I don't get burned out for them. Because I turn on my stream, I enjoy them. It's not like the end of the world. Sure, I would love to do some other stuff more, but... All of these grinds and stuff like that. I don't hate them that much as maybe other people do. Um, but sure, I would love, I wouldn't mind being without them, but this time around it was a little bit different because before the raid came out, we had this new zone and we were getting flight stones, we were farming rares and stuff like that. And I was doing this on nine characters. And I was done with all of this in four days on my nine characters. People that are playing one, maybe two characters. There was like literally nothing to do. And I felt this, I felt empty. It was the first time where we didn't have an endless grind that we had to do. And it felt super weird. I was just like, well, what the fuck? What can I do now? I was sitting there, like, making some small adjustments to my UI, like, things like that. Like, just looking a little bit of the raid fights, you know, again, like, just recollecting uh, what we did on PTR and stuff like that. I was just, like, I was relaxing. I think that's a good thing, though, for the game. But it was a change. It was a change I, that felt strange to me. Because I had... I was really trying hard to like figure out what the hell can I do. It got to the point where people were going around farming dirt for a chance of getting a flight stone bag. Which I can just say now that, well, I upgraded all of my items and I had flight stones left over. <laughs> so that was completely wasted, by the way. Uh, but that was also because we had a lot of flight stone discounts <clears throat> as well. I would like to add from my old characters from uh, some of the spare loot. So I upgraded all of my gear, my old characters as well, uh, so I could cover all item slots, um, so I would get flight stone reduction on my main, if that makes sense. So like, let's say I have uh, on my main character, Ginger Pumper, then I have eight other characters, and then I would upgrade uh, certain items on as many item slots as possible on my other eight characters, so that I had a flight stone reduction on my main character, on every single item slot. I did that as much as I could with the items that I had available um, to reduce the cost of like all my items, right? <laughs> but I had a lot of flight stones left over. I still have the unused items <laughs> in my bag, actually. <laughs> but generally, I think that it is good for the game that you're not forced into like a endless grind. But yeah, let's continue. The third best case scenario, which is what we have now, which is the worst case scenario, is that you have two unequal advantages. You have the unequal advantage of being able to start early, which is more powerful than the other unequal advantage of being able to watch strats ahead of time and plan accordingly and hopefully use people's mistakes to your advantage whenever you finally are able to play the game. Both of these strategies are... Or sorry, both of these advantages are advantages, but they are massively unequal. And EU is massively nerfed. The NA advantage is way better. Yeah. It's way higher. So how would you feel if you invested, you know, months of time into something and then somebody beats you 
because they literally just got the game earlier. That would feel like shit. <laughs> it would suck. Us. Fucking so I sucks. can absolutely see why uh, why the, the, the Echo guys are upset. I don't want to take away from Liquid because the truth is that Echo, I, I think that in longer races, Echo is going to have more of an advantage. Because, like, I, I, I would say that Echo has... If that was an unknown beforehand, I get this point, but it's nothing new. No, it, it is nothing new that there's no global release. That is true. We have one. Um, even though there has no be been no global release. But it's very important to understand that we need to work. I think I can I can put it up like this. If if we play equally as good as Liquid, we lose. If we play a little bit better than Liquid, we lose. We need to play a lot better than Liquid to win. And this is the reality. We almost lost Sylvanas, even though, in my opinion, we played a lot better in that race. Just because of the timing of the race. And that's how the race to the first is. And the dust suck. Yeah, let's continue. I don't know. I, I can't really say which team is like better because I think there, it probably depends on the boss, depends on the day, depends on the individual players, right? I'm not sure. But Echo has beaten Liquid every fucking time. Last three times they've beaten Liquid. And I think the reason, yeah, they're four and one, right? So it would make more logical sense. Think about it like this, right? It would make more logical sense that the shorter a raid tier is, the more of an advantage Liquid would have. Definitely. I mean, think about it like this, right? So if you're trying to catch up from a like a 10-hour uh, disadvantage in a race that lasts three days of Mythic rating, you have to catch up that time in a shorter time span. Now, if the, if the race lasts, let's say, 10 days or in Sepulchre, like several weeks, you have more time to catch up. So the shorter the race is, the harder it is to catch up. I mean, that's how it is. Um, yeah, let's, that's pretty obvious, though. Let's see. What are your thoughts on Max Tech? Do you guys have fewer bucks, fewer encounters of getting to an Overtune boss? Also have the info from NA. We talked about this earlier. And... When NA gets into like an overtune boss, which has happened before, right? You had the, um, uh, what's it called? I guess the Polker, there wasn't really any. Okay, Halandris got uh, was overtuned a bit, got nerfed. Um, it was also like previous tier in Vault of the Incarnates. There was a lot of nerfs required. In those cases, they're ahead, then they run into a wall, and we kind of catch up a bit. Then they lose a bit of their, uh, ad, like, of their time advantage. And I agree with that. But this was not the case for this tier. There was not a single boss that needed nerves. This tier was easier than the rest. Getting strategies from NA on bosses that takes sub-10 pulls. You don't really gain that much time. Like Rashok and uh, Scarn, like that was some of like that was the hardest mid tier bosses. They died really, really fast. Magmax was super troll, and the two bosses where you would gain the most from it, which was Notharian and Sakaref, we progressed past them on those two bosses. We got phase one and phase two information, went to sleep, and then they progressed while we were sleeping, and then you know they got phase three progression and killed the boss. So the only thing we could really take from them from Nilfarian was phase three. And phase three was fucking easy. We had our pla we had our positions already mapped out before that. The only thing that we did, so we didn't really, really take their strategy. We went into last phase, we held bloodlust in phase one, we didn't use it like they did. And then we went into phase one with everyone alive for the first time, we got like a, a sub two percent wipe. The first time we saw phase three. 
his face was an absolute meme. The only thing that wiped people was phase one and phase two, the hardest parts, and especially phase two. And it was the hard positions that was a hard part of this fight. We didn't really gain any strategic advantage on Nilfarian. They got to Zagreb first, but they did it late into their, into their night. They turned off streams. And then we went on and we did some phase one, phase two, so a little bit of phase three. They locked on, took some information from us, optimized it a bit. They got to phase three and turned off streams again. If they didn't do that, we would have been able, like you said, taking strategies from them, probably prog progress to phase three and maybe even have killed the boss before they woke up if they didn't turn off streams there. That was not the case this time. We weren't able to take strategies from them because they took off their streams. So I don't think Max has used this argument for this rate tier. But it is true that we have been able to take strategies in the past, which obviously we need to. But we go back to taking this as, yes, you can t take strategies from NA. You can make some, like you can remove some of the mistakes that the other teams uh, made already, and you can speed up your progression. But we're going back to looking at two advantages. And starting first is a bigger advantage than it is to just get information from a team in front of you. It's not even close, by the way. There's a massive difference in advantage here. And it sucks that there even is anything like that. We just want global release. We just want to start at the same time so everything is like on the same level. That's all we want. <clears throat> The bad part about copying someone's homework is, let's see here, um, yeah, exactly. Copying someone's homework is only a way to catch up. It's never a way to, like, go past, if that makes sense. You need to figure out stuff by yourself past that point, right? <laughs> so it's only a catch-up game. We're playing the catch-up game until we get to the same level, and that's when we take off. And let me just say that we play a lot better when we're doing our own shit, you see a completely different like um, mentality whenever we're progressing. You know, the outside team uh, scribing and whatnot there, like looking at strategies, optimizing, figuring things out, uh, you know, we're making new decisions, new strategies, optimizations, things like that. The, f the thing is you get this momentum of progressing. Instead of, uh, okay, let's look at what Liquid did. Let's make the boom, boom. Let's see, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're doing like this. This is what they did. It's a completely different mindset that uh, you have when you're ahead. And this mindset pushes the guilds to play better because you're way more involved. You come up with things. Your, your brain is working a lot more because you're trying to come up with stuff yourself. And you play a lot better under these circumstances in this environment which is why we usually play best on the harder bosses. We don't want to like sit there and look at what other people do. We want to play the game when it's out and come up with our own shit. A lot more fun. <clears throat> that the delay in releases would take of the total time that's spent in the raid. So, for example, if you're doing it for one week, let's say it's 10% of the time they have an advantage, or 5% of the time. But if you have a two-week raid, then you're having a 3-and-3. Uh, three three. Is it 3-and-3? Three three? I, I, I guess, okay, so to be honest with you, I'm really not counting the earlier ones because I feel like Liquid, uh, sorry, Echo wasn't really very established at that point. Because I, that, that a lot of Echo is just like former Method members. So, I mean, again, like maybe this is just me being biased. But like anyway, neither was Liquid. Yeah, good point, right? Well, Liquid used to be Limit. Anyway, the point is that I, I think that Echo, Echo in the, in the last four races, let's look at it like this, right? In the last four races, Echo has won three of them. Okay? They have won three of the last four races. There you go. Uh, 
The last race is bogus, though. Uh, the last race is bogus. The vaults. I, I don't think the last race was bogus. I'm not sure. Last race was bogus. I mean, that's also one thing, right? Like, if we talk about the without keep talking eco advances, blah blah blah. Let's not take away from some of the things that the liquid also does. They're an amazing team. It's very important to say. And the tuning timing, in most cases, tuning chases and stuff like that works in favor of uh, American resets. Because that's when the is that are working, and that's when they make adjustments, and it's usually around the time when we go to bed, to wake up to nerfs. Time that it was different was on the most impactful uh, nerf timing, which was when Liquid was asleep, they were just about to wake up and play, we were progressing a Rasgif, they nerfed the boss, and we one shot it the next pull. We were already in it, progressing, we had the momentum. And then we kill the boss on the next pull. That timing fucking sucked for Liquid. And in that case, it wasn't even equal either. Because of the timing of things. And that's also another problem. There will always be external factors, small variables that will either be an advantage or disadvantage when you're not playing on the same footing. Like, you're not starting at the same time, not going to sleep at the same time. It's a race with a lot of different variables that are outside of your control. And that sucks in a competition and a race. Also a big reason why things like this wouldn't happen if we're playing at the same time. The, the, two, the nerf would happen at the same time while we're both sitting there playing and everyone will be on the same level. There wouldn't be issues like this either. That's just another uh, reason why <clears> there <throat> should be uh, a global release, right? Because then the last year there would also not have been a problem like this, um, like the, the timing of the of the of the nerfs, right? The shorter the raid, also more significant a head start becomes. Exactly. So, like for example, think about it like this. So. This is the first race. This is the second race. And let's say the head start is right here. Okay. <laughs> so. Intake. The proportion is better in the second one, right? Like, obviously, it's better here. Mm hmm. You're full of bad takes tonight? A am I, I mean, wrong? It's full of bad takes. This is what I mean. Like, people are actually arguing against Aspen here when he's just being, like, unbiased in this and just seeing it from what, for what it is. Why are people blindly following, uh, like, I don't want you guys to blindly follow everything I say. I want you guys to have your own takes on things and just listen to things for what they are. I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, which is, of course, impossible when I'm playing for Echo. But I'm trying to see things from both sides as much as I can. You guys can say if I, try, if I do a decent job at that, but I'm trying really hard to just make it as good as possible for every single team. Because I don't want to have an advantage over Liquid. I'm a competitive person. I just want to have it on like this equal for everyone. And I just want to beat people for like our own performance, our own skill, without any external variables that... We cannot control. That's all I want. I just want a fair competition. And I just want the best team to win. And if we lose because the other team is better than us, we go back to a drawing board and we improve for next time. There's nothing worse than like losing because of things that you cannot control. And it's just because the rules are just shit or whatever. Um, that's all I want. Not on bias, he's sponsoring you, but okay. The well, Star Forge was sponsoring our PCs.
But the thing is, what do you think? Like, like I have been doing these races for a long fucking time. I would like to say that I have pretty good insight into uh, like the race was first and wild competition in general. Guys, I would like to add that I have won a lot of MDIs and great pushes as well. I'm not, I'm a fucking shitty loser. But you can guarantee that I never ever like blame others or anything else from like a loss. There's things we could have done better this time around and we are definitely looking at those. We can only improve the things we, we, we can control. But that doesn't mean that we don't want what's best for the race towards first because we love doing them and we just want the competition and the race to be as good as it can be. But the race towards first is the way it is and has been for as long as we can remember. It's not been a global release yet. And we play around that. And we do our best to catch up and play around the way the race was first. This is now. This is the only thing we can do. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to try to change it. We feel like there's a big problem with the race was first. And we think that it deserves a little bit of recognition. And some changes. Because we feel like it would improve... Not just the race to the world first, but I think it would be a positive change for the European Asian player base in general to be able to play the game whenever it comes out. That's what I honestly believe. They do classic global release. Why not for retail? Yeah, they did classic uh, global release. I mean, it, it does look like they have a little bit of a different like take on classic. It seems like they're more likely to make changes in classic WoW and a lot more careful when it comes to retail WoW. But then again, not really, because they do implement like a lot of huge systems as well. Like things like the Flight Stone and Crest system, that's a complete rework for the gearing system compared to what it was before. So it's not exactly true. Sometimes they make very big and drastic changes, while other times they're like very careful. I'm not really sure where they draw the line. But like that we also like saw earlier, like there's Hardcore Classic has popped off recently. And then they recognize that and then they make a like, service for it. They're very quick to turn around on those things. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Relo, it can basically lose your rate night for guilds that only rate in the evenings. But... The thing is, Relo, right now you're looking at things like, okay, if there's a server reset on the evenings and there's unknown maintenance, it might mean that people cannot log on and play that evening and effectively lose a rate night. That is true if the maintenance will suck, which it, in many cases it has done for, for what's it called, for NA. Um, is it a big problem for those skills to, let's say, maybe not raid on the first day then? Uh, and then start the day after. Um, how many people would this negatively affect? Uh, maybe swapping one rate night for the first week of a new patch? Um, or do they just need to do, you know, like... How bad has the maintenance has been in the last couple of patches? It does seem like from the outside that Blizzard have been better at it. I knew that there was like gonna be a longer maintenance this time around, but then Blizzard actually updated it and they cut it down two hours or something. 
and it came out faster than um, they initially posted about. I, I can only speak for myself. Um, and yes, you're right that if the raid and the reset starts on the evening, there's a new patch coming out. People have planned to raid that night. And they do, let's say, raid from 7 to 11 or 7 to 12, uh, whatever it is that people raid with, uh, like raid times are, they might, let's say, lose a couple hours of that night if the maintenance is long. That could happen. Definitely. But do you think that potential negative? Um, you really think that outweighs the possibility of playing the game as soon as it comes out? I, I don't think you're the only one that thinks like this. Um, but I would like to at least have the chance of being able to play the game instantly when it comes out. And if I have to wait two more hours because of maintenance, um, then so be it. I would way rather prefer that than wait a full day and just sit and watch other people play the game. But that's how I feel. I see, the, uh, the global release would make the race way less toxic and allow many other guilds to compete. Um, that's, I mean, that's true. So, like, I think the, when you say many other guilds to compete, I think right now there's three guilds competing. I'm not sure how, like, how good the Asian guilds like Skyland and stuff like that actually are, but it could be that if it was global release, you would maybe see some of these Asian teams be more competitive. Um, that could happen. <laughs> but uh, a global release would only it would benefit European and Asian guilds, right? It wouldn't change anything for NA. NA would have a harder time competing um, than now, right? Since they would not have their advantage anymore. Uh, so maybe there would be a couple swaps at the top places. Um, maybe some EU and Asian guilds would take over some of the American guilds. It, that could happen, definitely. There was global release. See, if it was global release, see, the losing team will find something else to blame. Loot lock. Only real fix is to make it an event with rules and tournament. Okay. I don't think there is going to be any excuses. Like, some people are saying, like, okay, if it's global release, you'll find something else to excuse your loss about. No, they wouldn't. You've never seen, like, us complain about, like, a loss in MDI or something like that. Oh, wait. True. I mean... We lost, the last time we lost was in Sydney, and I mean, the thing is, no one said shit about that. The only thing is that we fucking played like shit. Uh, it was a bad final. I mean, this, that's all you can say. Things like blaming the sleep schedule because you're in a time zone. Bro, it doesn't matter. I, I like, just the fact that people even mention that. Just don't understand. Like, they have no idea who we are. It doesn't matter if we have to, like I said, I used this example yesterday. If we have to do island expeditions for like 14 hours per day for two weeks straight to get artifact power, we will do that. It doesn't matter if we have to wake up at whatever time, man. Like, it has no effect on us. It, it, it doesn't matter. Like, so that is not a factor. Time zones, sleep schedules has no impact on the race. We will adjust accordingly. Blaming things like loot luck and stuff like that. Bro, we're doing so many splits raid. We have plus 30 members in the raid. If someone gets unlucky, that guy is benched. You will guarantee that the 20 members that are in after the splits from both Team Liquid and Echo, the difference will not be as impactful as you think it might could be. Sure, they might have a warrior too that got lucky with like uh, 
you know, big weapon drops or something like that. But okay, then maybe our mages got lucky and our mages are a little bit more powerful than the mages, you know, like it evens out because we're doing so many splits. We all have like eight plus characters that we can adjust our mains to depending on what drops. And our raid setup might be, you know, a little bit different here and there because our boomkin, our second boomkin got a little bit more loot. So we play two boomkins. They only have one boomkin in, you know, things like that. There might be some small differences here and there. But it's such a small difference that it has no impact on the race because we're doing everything we can to eliminate the RNG as much as we can by doing so many characters and so many splits. So loot lock is also not a factor. <laughs> let's let's continue here. Yeah. About something. You're Wait not. a second. Wait a second. How am I wrong about this? Explain how my graph is wrong. I want explain it or you're banned. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> explain. Know you're banned. <laughs> explain how my graph is wrong. This is 100% an opinion. There's no way you can prove one advantage is better than another. My God, it's an opinion. It's not an opinion, though. The, the thing is, it's important to say that the advantages, disadvantages, starting first and stuff like that, depending on the difficulty of the race, and also if there's an overtuned boss wall that you reach, before the other guild, so that you cannot progress, also has an impact on how big the advantage is, right? If there's a huge wall and you cannot progress because the boss is just crazily overtuned and they are forced to go out and do extra splits or do some M plus or whatnot until the boss gets nerfed, yes. Starting ahead, the advantage of that becomes smaller. That being said as well, if you get to the last boss and you just need a little bit of extra gear, then going to reset first, getting uh, another reset of gear will be an advantage. Which happened in Castle Nafir, for example. In that case, starting first, getting the reset first, is also an advantage, right? Getting to side in Nafir's with another reset of gear for a full day before um, makes a big difference as well, right? But in a reset like, in a raid like this, it's a massive advantage. No bosses needed nerves. Uh, the bosses were easy to the point where getting strategies didn't really save you that much time because there was the pull count was so low, the time saved was very minimal, so the head start becomes a bigger advantage in cases like this. So it depends on like how the raid uh, plays out, like how big or how small it is. So it's hard to say exactly uh, how big the difference is. For a race like this, I feel like it has a bigger impact. The thing is, and this is what everyone at least can agree on, it is n it's never going to be equal for as long as there's no, as, as long as you don't start uh, at the same time. But that's all we want. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things that you can't prove, but it is just common fucking sense. Are you really going to tell me that being able to start the raid and literally play the game earlier is an equivalent advantage to being able to watch somebody play the raid earlier? You are fucking delusional if you think that these two things are holy, equivalent. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> He's mad. <laughs> Let's see what this guy's is saying. How about getting blocked by bug bosses? Head start gone. Totally right. You're totally accurate. And if that happened, I would totally agree with you, but it didn't happen. Exactly. If you go into a boss's bug, you cannot progress it. Head start kind of gone, right? 
it didn't happen this time. So argument's gone. We're not talking about previous races. I did talk like in combination of all races, and I would say that I've also used examples to say like when the head start gives less of an advantage, happen on like the Fia, things like that, Razagev, Overtune bosses, and you're just sitting there waiting for a nerf to, in order to progress the boss fight. That fucking sucks. When it is like that. Because no guild can progress. Like, if you have a head start, even if we're ahead, let's say we, we overtake them late in the progress and we go into a wall on Razagev and we cannot progress the fight, they catch up again. So, like, both guilds are equal at all times. So it's only the, the last sprint after the boss has been nerfed that matters, which happened last year. When we were playing, the boss got nerfed and we killed the boss. That was what was needed in order to kill the boss and we were playing and we just killed the next pull. That also fucking sucks. Um... A tier like this, no nerfs were required. The bosses were easier than uh, they've been in the past. Um, and in cases like this, the head start just makes a big difference. If Equad won, this wouldn't have been an issue. It is an issue and is something that we hate every single time. Win or lose, we are always talking about global release. It's just now when we finally lose and we talk about it, and people come in and like call us sore losers, blah, 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 things like that. That's not what this is about. We just want to improve the races, want a global release, because it fucks, sucks not having it, but you only really listen when we finally lose, because now all of a sudden, everyone comes out of their caves and starts trash-talking the guild the same second we lose, because people have been waiting for us to lose. But we talk about it every single time. Does just because somebody has a head start doesn't mean that they will win? Watching can help you prepare more? Am I taking crazy <laughs> pills? <laughs> this is what it's like being a streamer. You can say something that like counter argues like uh, something. And then five minutes later, someone talks about, like puts the same argument like five minutes later that you just talked about. It happens so often and you just go fucking crazy, dude. It, it happens so often that it's just like, oh my God. I think the difference is playing and planning from behind and planning while seeing the raid early. What? Of course there's a difference. Well, which difference do you want? <laughs> do they count the time it takes to complete? So for a last boss, it takes two hours to down, but... Boss B downs the boss in, in 1.5 hours. Yeah, the echo strat is to perma stay behind liquid then overtake them on the last two bosses. The time... Oh my god. The echo strat is to stay behind all the time until the last two bosses. Yes. That's our strat. Yo, guys. Um, so our strat for this progress is to be behind the whole raid tier and then, you know, sneak behind them towards the end. Fucking idiot, man. I can't. Liquid killed the bosses too quickly and they weren't able to execute. You haven't explained how NA has an advantage and chat's dumb. Okay, so let me go ahead. Maybe, maybe people don't understand it, right? So the way that it happens is that the raids are released on NA first. And then they are released on EU. How many hours later? I want to make sure that I get this right. How many hours later are the raids released? They're released 12 to 16 hours later. It depends on maintenance. Um, does someone have the accurate hours for this one?
would have to look at it. But people are saying 12 hours. I, I don't know exactly the amount of hours because, of course, it depends on like how long the maintenance for NA is. Um, and also, the, uh, the EU reset is now lowered down. We got the, the reset at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, so we got two hours less compared to normal. Actually, it's three hours because it normally would have been nine. So we, we, we shave three hours off our normal reset uh, times compared to what it was in the past. Um, and then in a maintenance, is a little bit RNG, right? Sometimes a little bit longer than other times. Um, don't know exactly how long this one was. Um, yeah, that's also one thing. Uh, the rate was bugged for EU. When they pushed the new patch, they forgot to push the rate and the world bosses and stuff like that. So even when the servers were up, we could not enter the raid uh, until one hour later. Um, just so you guys know, the raid was not open until one hour into the patch because they forgot to push the raid. That was a bug that e uh, EU had. So the red bar here represents those 12 hours. This is the delay. Right? This is the delay that you have of whenever the raid is only available in NA. So the red bar there is whenever the raid is only available in NA. And the green bar is whenever the raid is available in both EU and NA. Logically, if you have a shorter race, yeah, that delay period of 12 hours is a larger proportion of the total time inside of the race. So let's do some math here, okay? Let's say the race, how long was the race? Yeah, how long was the race? It was, how long was the race? It was, um, I have to go to radar over to see this. So... It was two and a half days of mythic progress. Um, so we killed it. First defeat is 723. Not correct, though. First raid week, May 16th. May 16th, it was. It was a Tuesday. Right. Um, so, Tuesday at... Since we started at 6 o'clock. That's when we woke up. But the raid was not open till 7. So, it was... That would have been 6 days. So, it was 5 days and... I guess 18 hours for us. Right? My math is correct. It would be six days if it hits six a.m. on or oh, seven a.m. on uh, on the Tuesday. It would have been it would have been uh, six days. So we killed it like six hours ish, five and a half hours ish before it would have hit the six day mark. It was five days and like nineteen hours ish for us. Five days and 19 hours, approximately. Um, they killed it on May 15th, 1950. It's not American times, though, but... Their, choose, their Tuesday is when their reset is, right? They killed theirs on the sixth day. Um, the day before the reset. It was the seventh day. Yeah. Yeah, but it was, so like when, when I mean their sixth day, it was past their sixth day, right? It, they were going into the reset. So they had their last day. It would, it would, when the reset starts, 
that is when seven days has passed, if that makes sense. It was their last day. It was six days plus the hours um, that they were playing, if that makes sense. Six days. Okay. Um, six times 24. Uh, what is that? Um, fucking... Uh, let's see. 144 hours, something like that? Yeah. Um, 144 hours. Hmm. So, you take 12%, uh, or sorry, 12 out of 144. Can somebody just do the math on that for me? Okay. Okay, one twelfth. Okay, that's that's actually a good idea. Yeah, let's just let's just do one twelfth, okay? And this is one twenty fourth. <laughs> so whenever the percentage of time that you spend is smaller, it would make sense that the time that you're spending without the uh uh sorry, with the advantage is more important. <laughs> I like how he's making like a drawing, doing maths and stuff like that. <laughs> Isn't it pretty obvious? Like, look at the fucking red and green. It's harder to catch up in a shorter race than it is in a long race. I don't think you need to make it, <laughs> cut it out like that. I think it's pretty obvious for people. Is there anybody who doesn't understand what I'm trying to say here? <laughs> Good. There's so many intangibles not taken into account. It, 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 no, no, no. It's an advantage, but it's more complicated for sure. Liquid played better overall, and I think had better strategy, but the perception is that it's bad. Uh, I think this is also one thing, right? Like, when people say, and this is also what I've said, I think they played better on the on the later boss. I think they were better on Sack Ref as well. Um, they had the last phase strategy and came up with it quickly, and uh, they did good there. Um, but a part of the race as well is also splits, and that was one of the that was where we kind of caught up time. We did splits really efficiently and we were done with them really fast. Um I think we did a good job uh there. This was a part of the race. Um and the last bosses were so easy that even if one guild, let's say, did better than the other, the bosses were so easy that the differences was only a matter of hours. Right? So even if Liquid in this case like did better on Psycho Ref. It mattered less than, let's say, doing good on a really hard boss. Because the boss was a um, simple one compared to previously. But doing good on a boss like that saves you less time. If Liquid played better and had better strategy, if you take the time... Yeah, but the thing is that the variable of, of like time spent doing splits and the efficiency of splits is why I'm emphasizing it. It's something that people don't take into account. They look at the pull counter on last boss and they instantly say, yeah, but Liquid did better on the last boss. And they did. They did. But you need to take in, like you need to take everything into account. The whole race, starting from the like from the first day of reset, doing splits to when Sakharov is dead, and all the time spent from start till end. These are all you need to account for all of it. Because throughout the race, one guild will do better than the other, and some bosses, some will do better on splits, blah blah blah. But you need to take everything into account. It's a race that starts from the beginning, it's not a race that starts on the last boss. And I think that's what people tend to forget. <clears throat> didn't Liquid... Yeah, I mean, Liquid stopped streaming their progress on the last boss and last phase. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we talked about that earlier as well, right? Because you had this back and forth all the time. So we were streaming Sakharov progress before them. They turned off stream when they killed Nefarian, but it was late in their night, so they didn't play it that much. Uh, and then we did some phase one, phase two progress. 
we were, you know, getting a bit ahead there. And then they get that information from us and then they progress into phase three and then they turn off streams, which was the right move. Like I said, if, if they gave their 14% kill try away, they would have given timers away, they would have given strategies away, and there would have been a chance that we would have killed the boss with that information before they woke up. Because at the end of the day, getting the timings down and the strategy down in the last phase is what takes tries and pulls. If we had their strategy from the start, they might have lost the race. So they turned off the stream to go for the win, which no one can blame them for. I mean, you're not going to throw away your win just uh, for a couple hours of stream. Um, I don't think we would have done the same either. We did in Castle Nafri as well, you know, because the win was more important. Um, like that's kind of what happened there. <clears throat> That's also one thing, like information like this wouldn't matter in a global release because you'd be going head to head, you'd be streaming at the same hours, going to sleep at the same hours. But overall viewer experience, I think it would be better. The only thing you could argue against for the viewer experience is that uh, European viewers would have to watch in the middle of the night sometimes in order to follow the race closely because you'd be playing around uh, American times during the race. <clears throat> but you'd be watching the girls going head to head. The most epic race wars first, in my opinion, is when the guilds are close to a kill and you're watching both uh, guilds play at the same time. You saw low percentage wipes inside the Nafrius. The guilds going head to head. You saw, you saw us doing a 6% wipe on Sakharev before Liquid had killed it. That is the most hype time in a race. And the whole race would be like this if we started at the same time. So I think the viewership experience would be a lot better and easier to follow. It wouldn't be this back and forth all the time. One guild going taking off, then they go to sleep, then the other guild overtakes them. This is this back and forth all the time, but you'd actually be seeing the two guilds going at it head to head, which I think is way cooler to watch, personally. <clears throat> From the beginning of the raid to whenever the last boss dies, which guild had a shorter time period? Was it Liquid or was it Echo? It was Echo. And also, playing the last boss extremely well is the most important thing, but it's not the only important thing. That's not comparable because they were using strats that were already created. Oh my god, people are still using the strats? I disagree with you. Because in... <laughs> In some in some, po in some um, years, we have taken a lot more strats from Liquid because they're ahead uh, that have mattered. But this time around, it mattered the least it's ever done because the bosses were so easy and because we didn't really get strategies from the, later, from the last two bosses. We were progressing on stream ahead of them on these two bosses uh, and we didn't get their last, fee strat last, free last phase strategy on Zagaref, so... This time around, the, the strat argument, it doesn't work. Some tiers we've taken, you know, it, it's mattered more. Um, and <clears throat> yes, you definitely save time. Like if they have to spend, let's say, 10 hours to get to boss number six, and we watch them, we might, let's say, do it in nine hours or eight hours, whatever. You might cut off some time. But you're still trying to catch up. And depending on the difficulty of the bosses, the time you save will be more because then strategy and whatnot will matter more. But because the bosses were so easy, the time saved is reduced, which was the case this time around. Um, but of course you do it quicker. But the thing is, is the difference here in advantage from getting information beforehand and being able to shave off time is still smaller than starting ahead, especially in a tier like this, when it's so short and the bosses aren't too hard. <clears throat> you couldn't even get the boss under 30% until the turn streams on though. Um, if you look closely, you will see that we did not have the same strategies in the last phase at all. The things that we were struggling with uh, was not getting sub 30% in the last phase. It was getting consistent phase two pulls. We're cleaning up our phase two and optimizing that one. 
but our phase three strategies were completely different. So the fact that you say that we could not get sub 30% until they turned our streams on had nothing to do with their strategies because we had our own phase three strategy. We did not take theirs this time. Um, we're just, we just needed to get to phase three consistently because phase three was actually not a very hard last phase. Um, and them turning on their streams had nothing to do except maybe turning the trigger on in our brains that, holy shit, they woke up earlier today. We need to fucking turn on the engine and press the speeder now if we want to win this race. So maybe it could have pushed the players like in a motivational way to the point where we started playing better, but it had nothing to do with them turning on the streams and us getting information from them. Because we had two different strategies. <clears throat> <clears throat> don't you think they played last best better of all yeah I, I mentioned that as well I think they played last Zagreb um, better than us um, they had a better strategy as well I think in the last phase both strategies worked but uh, I think they had a better strategy but the thing is in a race the last uh, six days or in previous tiers longer the end result is not just based on the results of one boss it based on the result of the whole tier everything matters every single second you save matters and people are maybe focusing too much on the last boss only as like a indicator of let's say, who played best, because they played best, uh, better on, like, I would say that they did the mythic progression faster. But time spent doing splits and efficiency of splits and things like that, earlier bosses and whatnot, you need to add the speed of everything collectively, not just the last boss. And this is where it's hard to grasp, like, um, exactly, like, how fast you were doing different things, and thinking about, okay, how much did the head start matter, blah, blah, blah. Like, you just, you cannot know. Uh, because you're not playing on an even footing. And that's why, you know, in a competition, no matter what, there should, when a winner, when, the, when you found a winner, there should be absolutely nothing that anyone can say other than, okay, the best team won. They were faster. They were better. But when it's not a uh, global release or when you're not starting at the same time, there will always be this external factor that you just, you don't know exactly how much it mattered. Because it's, all of it is what ifs, you know. Um, the only thing you can really do is like do estimated calculations and, and whatnot. But the thing is that <clears throat> if it wasn't, let's say, if it was global release, then Liquid might also have done different decisions because Liquid also didn't uh, do mythic progression while we were in Elfarian. They let us progress the fight, you know? Like, they played um, around the fact that they started ahead. You know, they had that into their calculations and their strategies, so they would have played the, the progress and the rates differently if there was no head start. So there's a lot of variables here that you need to account for, and it's just impossible to really know exactly how much it mattered. The only thing I think that everyone can agree on is that it's a competition. You want to play on the same, like let's say, um, you want to play the same way as every other competing team. You don't want to start first. You don't want to start behind. You just want to play under the same circumstances. <clears throat> the last boss the odds are those guilds are going to be on the last boss together for at least two days and also the first four bosses what was the wipe count like how many times did they wipe on like the first four bosses of the raid because i remember i thought um like one time five times who cares 
Like, if I remember right, um, like, Echo was only one boss behind him at the beginning. Yeah, zero. One time the first three. Yeah, I mean, like, this isn't... These these early bosses are a joke for these guilds. Mm. We got have far less overall pulls. That's tangible proof. Um, I think that having less pulls... You, so so that that's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, less pulls. Like I said, they did better than, on Zagreb than us. But it's also important to say that uh, <clears throat> time spent versus amount of pulls is also a factor, right? You could have maybe you pull more frequently. That could be a thing. But that being said, I think they did better on Zagreb than us. No doubt about that. Um, but just looking at the amount of pulls is not always uh, the only thing to look at. There's also... Um, after they killed it, you play worse when you know you just lost, right? Of course. Um, everyone cares so much, and we had a lot of sloppy wipes. Was that because they killed the boss already? I, hard to say. You know, I don't know how every single player in our guild feels uh, mentally after something like that happens. The only thing you can do is try to shake it off, but it will definitely not have a positive effect. On your gameplay. Um, so, you know, of course, you play worse after you've just lost the race. That could maybe also have affected, like, how we finish the race. It's hard to say, right? That's a um, mental factor that is impossible to, to really put a number on. <clears throat> You legit won the last three tiers. Just congratulate the other team and I have congratulated congratulated Liquid. Um this is not a like any discussion trying to take away from their win. This is how the race was versus has been for several tiers. This is the competition that we are playing and we are understanding of that. And this is what we're competing in. Um that does not mean that I will shut up and try not to advocate for a change that I think would be amazing for the game so that we can hopefully improve on the races going forward. Just because some guy from Twitch chat is screaming, uh, bad boy is mad or writing Salt Bay gifts, you think I give a fuck? I will try and advocate for the game that I want, that I think would improve the races. You think it's uh, healthy with these near-impossible bosses like Kil'jaeden, Una? No, I don't think so. I think... Uh, <clears throat> I don't want a Sepulchre rate. Okay? I think Blizzard is going in the right direction with the new gearing system. I think for the general player base, the new gearing system is a lot better now. A lot easier for people to gear up, get loot, especially if you're not a Mythic Raider. You can get Crafty Gear 447, which is three item levels be behind like the highest... like. Sakuref Mythic Loot, okay? <clears throat> you can get Mythic Plus Loot that you can upgrade to 441. We're in week two, by the way, and you already have 20 Aspect Crests and 20 Worm Crests. You can have full 441 item level gear. Plus two 447 items. It's crazy. You have, like, it's so easy to gear now, uh, and I think that's good. But with that, you also need to consider the difficulty of the bosses. I think it's great that the bosses don't have to get nerfed or adjusted or things like that. And the bosses just naturally becomes easier as you get more and more gear. I think that's a way healthier thing instead of like sitting there dissecting the bosses, nerfing them and making them just a fraction of what they were when they got released. Painsmith, Halundris, like those bosses just com got completely destroyed uh, for what they were in the beginning. But the thing is, bosses like that, from a race towards first perspective, when people are watching are saying, holy shit, Painsmith was one of the best bosses to watch of all times. It was so good. But then when you go there as a guild, and you wipe over and over again, and you just cannot progress it, all of a sudden, the boss is not as cool as you expect, thought it was. It was good to watch it, but it was not good to play it. Uh, and it's hard to like find that like in between. <clears throat> um, 
So I think that this tier was too easy, but I also think a tier like Sepulcher was too hard. But I think they can definitely tune it up a little bit, right? I don't think you want like a mythic rate tier to die in three weeks, three days of mythic progress. I think that is too easy. Um, but something like Sepulcher, like where it takes the top guilds like two and a half weeks to kill an end boss, and you have done splits and crazy amounts of stuff to be able to do it, you rate like 14 hours per day, and you know, you, you watch the best guilds in the world that do everything to win. They play full time, they do so many splits, they have way more item level than the rest of the world, they still take that long. That is an indicator that it's probably too hard and there's not many people outside of the top guilds that will even be able to kill these. That is on the like high end of like way too hard to do. Then you have the, the complete overtune shit you had on Kill Jaden, but that was off stream, you guys didn't see that. Completely overtuned boss, you cannot progress it, you're just waiting for nerfs. You had Razagev as well, you cannot progress into mission, it's too hard, you're just waiting for a nerf, you know. Like you have these things as well, it's also bad. So the fact that you didn't have to nerf any bosses, I think is great for the game. I just think it was in the low end. Could be a bit harder um, than it was this time around. But again, um, maybe it's really hard to find that perfect number. You know, like... <clears throat> Uh, I have seen JV's clip. You want perfection. I don't want perfection. I think perfection is impossible. But I want um, it at least more difficult than this. You know, I think they should... It's a numbers thing, right? I think... Uh, and this is also what they said. Ayana said this in the interview, that they aim to have the mythic rate progress last around 10 days. That's the goal. They did not hit that mark this time. I see Sylvanas tuning was insane. So think about it like this. Sylvanas died on the Tuesday noon for us, which was our last day, but it was early in our last day. But this is something that people need to remember. That was... Six days of mythic progress. Because back then you had Heroic Week. You were doing all of the splits and all of the gearing in the previous week. This is also one thing. Something that the top guilds actually did very badly. Sylvanas could have died a lot faster than it actually did. Because you had this new system with domination shards. And it was a system that was not being... You could not test it on PTR or anything like that. And it was when we weren't doing like a lot of... like. Um, Duplicate characters and, and whatnot. Like, if we actually did um, a lot of... Let's say, I was playing Boomkin that tier. If I played, like, five, six Boomkins and everyone was doing the same with their main characters, we would have full domination shards on all of our characters, and I think that tier would actually have ended differently than, than it did. Uh, because it was a system that got introduced super late. I think that, by the way, domination shards, I think it was one of the worst things uh, that they could have done uh, on that short notice and being so hard to obtain. But my point is, you had the heroic rates in the previous week, and then you went into mythic, so it was like six days of mythic progress. Whereas this time around, it was only three days of mythic progress, right? So it took uh, it doubled the amount of, um, of time in actual mythic than it did this time around. Even though it was the end of the first week, now we have... Heroic and Mythic mash together. <laughs> see, why not try to agree with Liquid that they wait 12 hours and you guys stop 12 hours before reset? So you have 6 days every week neck to neck and you automatically have a 24 hour reset mandatory for recovery gentleman's agreement
I mean, if we played at the exact, I mean, like, if all of the top guilds agreed to play and stop at the exact same time, and it was an even race, and there was no external factors, everyone was raiding when the other guilds were raiding, and everyone would stop when the other guilds would stop. You could do something like that, yes. But... Think about it like this. Why should the people in power give up their power? Why would they give up their advantage? They have nothing to gain from it. If there's no gain, I don't see why you would convince them. From a com competitive uh, like standpoint, it would make the race like even, right? If they don't lose any time and, the re and we start at the same time on reset, let's say. So if everyone plays at the exact same time, starts at the same time, and you know we stop uh, raiding whenever it matches the reset times, then yes, it will be completely even. But NA has no, nothing to gain from it. Except uh, making the race even. But why should they do that? Think about it like this. Team Liquid starts the progress a day before us, right? They get a higher viewership, by the way, because they played the game before us. So they get a peak viewership by having the game in front of them earlier. Team Liquid is an organization that also cares about revenue and viewership. They will be giving that away. They have a head start advantage that helps them win in the race as well. They will be giving that away. There's absolutely, there's no chance in hell they're going to be giving those things away. Without any gain. Would you and Echo? I mean, you'd reverse the roles, right? And I can honestly say that if we started before NA, we had a head start, it reflected on the viewership and the success of the event, sponsors are more happy, more money is coming in, would we be making that gentleman's agreement with no gain? Fuck no. <laughs> so we cannot expect it of them either. So, uh, the only thing that could really change this is if the race was first, if there is like global release or if it ever went to a tournament room, you know. But of course, global release would be my number one choice. I would love if that was the case. I don't want to have to go to tournament room unless it's like absolutely necessary. Um, but again, the tournament room would make it so that l no people would be affected, right? But. But I think global release would be my preferred. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, global release is not a problem from a few last years when you won. Um, so cheap from you. And this is where you don't listen in class. Um, you, you read the headliner, you don't read the, the actual uh, writing below, you only hear what you want to hear. We've been talking about this since... 2020, I made a post about it as well. Um, and I've been talking about it for many, many years. Every single time, win or lose. You just, don't, you just don't listen. You only listen when you want to listen. You only come out of your cave when you can finally say, haha, Jinji, you lost. You're such a loser. Yeah. 
<laughs> I've talked about it many times. Why not be positive like liquid and not always complaining seem toxic? What are you talking about, bro? Liquid complained last time about the tuning timing. You even had, uh, like, uh, Ben, he, he rage quit from the tuning, uh, like, the hotfix timing of Resigef. He says, fuck this shit, I'm done with Blizzard, I'm going to Path of Exile. You're saying they're not complaining? These external variables and factors that you have no control over in a competitive um, environment, they suck. But the thing is, the head start in, in, is affecting us every single time. Last time, the nerf to Rasagev affected them. The whole point is that it's not uh, even. So don't tell me that they, they're not complaining. They complain when they're justified to do so. We complain when we're justified to do so. I don't complain about losing. I complain about that there's still no global release after many years of success and viewers in for the race was first. It's something that both, like all top guilds have been asking for. And I think, sure, if the reset times are around uh, NA and we get reset times in the evening, it might, uh, let's say, affect uh, some people um, a little bit negatively that they have to swap around their raid times and stuff like that, maybe on the first reset. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think that there would be a lot of people that would also really like to play the game as soon as it comes out instead of waiting a full day. The only thing that would... The only argument you could say is that would be bad is that the, um, on a reset time at around evening time for EU with extended maintenance would like suck for some players that were planning on raiding that evening. Um, that's actually the only like proper argument I've heard so far. But for me, if there's maintenance a couple extra hours and I can log on, let's say 9, 10 or something, you know, that's fine with me. And if you're a casual player and you log on the next day, um, I don't think it would change much either. Because right now there's reset at like 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. You still get to play uh, maybe, let's say, 10 hours after the game has come out. So I don't think it would affect much for those kind of players either. <laughs> Let's move to NA. We have discussed going to NA, but the thing is, it's not a, as easy as you just think. There's a lot of logistical issues playing on NA. Playing competitively with high ping, first of all, that sucks. You'd be losing our community because we've been moving over to NA, so all of our European community that helps us with splits and stuff like that, the people I do uh, Mythic Plus with and whatnot as well, um, wouldn't be able to play those. The thing is, you'd be giving up a lot of things moving to NA. And if you want to play the race was first with like actual proper ping, you would have to do an event in America. Um, and I can tell you that flying all of our European players over to NA would be very expensive. So um, the margins on the events would also be lower. Like there's a lot of factors that plays into moving to NA. Don't Liquid uh, got a bunch of EU players? Um, yeah, I'm actually not sure like how many of the EU players actually went to the Team Liquid facility. I would also like to add that Team Liquid is one of the biggest uh, esports organizations in the world. They have, uh, like, they have a way bigger budget than, uh, than we have in Echo. Um, 
and not just the WoW team. And I think that, like, is the logistical challenge of being able to pull quickly part of winning this race? And I think the truth is that yes. Yes, it is. In a Andes, really think watching a Super Bowl for 10 years give them an advantage be compared to actually playing it for 10 years? Yeah. I agree. Echo would have seen hours of liquid play before they themselves started. Yes. And, and I'm not saying, listen, guys, I'm not saying that Echo doesn't have an advantage by watching Liquid. What I am saying is that Liquid has a bigger advantage by being able to start early. And I think that it is a tremendous big advantage. Volume up, it's full. That's what I think. Yeah, no one would choose. Yeah, yeah, here's a real, yeah, it's actually a very good way to look at it. Do you think that Liquid would choose to be, would choose to watch instead of play early? Yeah, but... Like, how many of you guys would choose to watch instead of just play early? Of course you wouldn't play. Of course not. So that goes to show that, I mean, they clearly value the advantage of being able to play early more. Because it's a better advantage. How is this even an argument? Because people are, people are, are not thinking at this, they're not thinking about this logically. No, they're not. Like, I can give you a graph that makes perfect sense, and people are like, no. What do you want me to say? I mean, it's true. You can show proof. You can talk about it. You can you can look at things from both sides, like have solid arguments. And then uh, people reply with, cry more, uh, you salty uh, fat fuck. Uh, like, that's a and you're just sitting there, okay. Is this, is this the kind of person I'm discussing with? Like... You think Dale Earnhardt's gonna... <laughs> there you go. You think Dale Earnhardt's gonna watch the Daytona for the first 100 miles or drive it, brother? True. Maybe you can verify the hypothesis by checking other teams' ranking if more NA teams progress faster than EU teams in this rate overall. I don't think you can really do that because of such a small sample size. There are very few guilds that raid as often as uh, as Echo and, uh, and, and Liquid. True. So you can't really compare because the raid times are totally different. Like the only other guild you could compare with is like maybe Method. Mm. What if Liquid just waits to start for one day? Yeah, but they're not going to do that. No, exactly. Like we're talking about like gentleman's agreement. I mean, you could do that. You could play at the same times. We could make it like a fair race if you actually really wanted to. But why should they? They have nothing to gain from it. Let's see here. Uh, another way to go is more extreme. Would you? Oh, actually, I really like this logic. I really like your logic. Would you want to watch for 48 hours instead of playing? So instead of it only being 12 hours, would you rather have an advantage oh. of you, you get to watch them for the first two days? Fuck. I've... Wait. Wait, I need to... It was here. What if Liquid just waits to start for one? Yeah, day? here we take yeah, it from here. Not going to do that. Let's see. Here. I, I misclicked. Sorry. Uh, another way to go is more extreme. Would you? Oh, actually, I really like this logic. Mm. I really like your logic. Would you want to watch for forty-eight hours instead of playing? So instead of it only being twelve hours, would you rather have an advantage of? You, you get to watch them for the first two days, and then you get to play. Obviously not. So it's like, yeah, if you extrapolate that, that advantage, it's clearly garbage. 
Race is effectively a speed run. Having a 12 hour head start in a fucking speed run is absolutely huge. Yes, I am astonished. Yes, exactly. We, we are having an argument as to whether having a 12 hour advantage in a speed run event is an advantage or not. <laughs> That's my life right now. Wow. It's not like they do Mythic Day 1, uh, either. They literally do Heroic Splits, so Echo watching Liquid doesn't mean shit nowadays. Also, the Wait, what? I would prefer to watch for the first 12 hours instead of playing for those 12 hours. Just like a how I like to watch my wife get railed by other dudes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> what the... <laughs> Holy oh my god, I mean I don't judge. They're sleeping until the next morning too? Sure. China starts two days later and has never won. I don't know what China does. I have no idea. I can't there's not even an argument. Yeah, it's stupid to even talk about. Yeah, like and again, I really, really, really don't want this to turn into a shitting on liquid thing. Bro, like they won. Yeah, exactly. And it can be very easily misunderstood that that's what we're doing here. It's... No one's taking a hit of Liquid. It's nothing to do with them. They are a great team and they're, like I said, they're the team that's pushing us every single time. Without them, there wouldn't be a race. Um, and... Not their fault that there's no global release. They're playing to their advantage, just like any smart team would do. And who can blame them? And they won this race. And this is the way the race has been for forever. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't want it changed. That's all we're trying to do. Just want to change it. For the future. Trying to save face, bro. I don't give a fuck about saving my face. I say what I feel like, and I don't give a shit what you think. You can like me, you can dislike me, I don't give a shit. Let's continue. And Liquid has won multiple world firsts before. And they've won multiple world firsts, I think, with Nazoth. And it wasn't an eight-hour time period. They won, and, like, Echo didn't kill it until, like, way later. It, Liquid is the best skilled in the NA. Like, even if you don't think they're the best in the world, they're arguably the best in the world, but they're the best skilled in NA without a fucking doubt. So I'm not trying to shit on them or, like, devalue it at all. All I'm saying is that this is a really stupid thing that Blizzard has, like, insisted to have in the game. These delayed releases. As if people have more issues with... Okay, so this is also one thing, right? <clears throat> every single tier, every single MDI, every single great push. I like to make memes. I like to make some banter against... Our opponents, whether it's uh, Monka, whether it's JPC's team, whether it's Liquid, Max, Atlas, it doesn't matter. I like to troll. I like to make some banter for fun. And people are taking this as me being serious and attacking the other guild. Have some humor. People troll me and me me all the time. It's supposed to be fun. As long as it's not personal attacks. But if someone goes to bed crying and gets like really fucking mad. Oh, I fucking hope uh, Jinji loses this fucking idiot. You know, because I said, I hope you beat Method this time. Like. What the fuck? 
relax. And the thing is, memes like this can also backfire, which it did. Because now we lost. And I'm ready for that. I'm ready to take the heat as well. And honestly, I think it's just fun. Okay? I put myself in that position. And if people meme me, it's because I meme back. And it's fully deserved. And I laugh it off because I think it's funny. And I can laugh at myself. People are just taking things way too serious for no reason. So people need to relax a bit. Let's, uh, let's continue the video. <laughs> let's see. I, I just, I, I think it's so silly. And obviously, Genji uh, is upset about it. I, I'll read a few more of these. Um, uh, just do global release at this point. Then no one can say shit if you lose, myself included. It might come off as being a sore loser. Uh, but what I've been posting months of prepping is a tier at last three days. How can anyone be happy about that? Uh, I, I think also um, the length of the tier is not a problem. Uh, personally, I think it's totally fine if the tiers don't last that long. Uh, the reason why I think it's fine is because, uh, like, these guys complete a tier in... I mean, you could argue and say that, okay, so the, tier, the length of the tier, it was short. Um, and not necessarily the biggest problem. But it's harder to catch up in a short tier. And also, it's also fun to play the race towards first. So from a player perspective, I don't want it to be over so quickly. Um, that was mainly what I said. And what I meant by it. It was over so quickly. And I was, we were just getting started. It was that kind of feeling. Which was kind of sad. Yeah, exactly. I think Asman right now is talking for the general player base. And I think the tuning is in a better direction for the general player base this time around than it was previously. Um, and I agree with that. But I still think it was on the low end on the difficulty. Three days, other guilds complete this tier in three weeks or a month, right? It's like, I don't think like you should not balance a game the benchmark should not be, like, how fast a world first guild clears the game. Like, that's it. It's hard to say, essentially, they started Mythic around the same time. It's not like Liquid had more gear. If anything, Echo might have done more splits more efficiently. Oh, that's possible, right? I mean, you're always going to have RNG with gear, too. I mean, that matters, too. Absolutely. But who wins? First to finish or the ones that finished in less times from the moment that it was available for them? Uh, I, I don't know. Managing a standpoint, uh, global release would be pretty insane for the people in charge of supporting the release. I don't know. People are complaining about a delay, just get rid of the delay. Also, one crazy take going around is everyone saying the raid is too easy. Yeah, you're gonna have people that- it was the same in Emerald Nightmare. Like, right, you had people that were saying Emerald Nightmare was too easy, and like, they did heroic. It's like, what do you mean it's too easy? If it's- if it's- if it's so easy, then why didn't you beat it? It's easier for sure. It should be easier. The raids should be- they're too hard. The raids are way too fucking hard nowadays. Like, they're- they're insane. From JB. Oh, is this that video of him? I- I watched this off stream. This video is so funny, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a sec. You- you put- JB This guy, um, this guy's done so much Mythic Plus, it's- it's made him bald. So, he plays a lot of WoW. He predicted. He's been an this OG. fucking Tia JB, then. He's rank one gladiator. Uh, he was on all craft back in the day. It's like five keys. Because you have no idea what they're capable of. Race the World first guys come up with some of the craziest strats. They yeah. try so hard. There's no fucking chance that you're going to create a boss that is that is 
perfectly tuned out of the gate. So no matter what, you're going to have to hot fix it. And the second you start hot fixing anything, everyone starts screeching about it. So it's like, you know what? Yeah. Honestly, release a boss that dies in 20 pulls. Let the race world first be over in three days. And then everyone can shut the fuck up from that point on. If you're like, oh, you want a, you want a perfectly tuned boss? I've got one for you. Here. Here's this boss. It dies in 20 pulls. And all the mechanics work perfectly. Did you enjoy that? How was that? Did you, did you like that? I, I did you fun. like it when we Sounds released the boss? Me. We didn't have to hotfix? Oh, you didn't yeah. like that. Sounds great. Oh, that's because you never like anything. Because you're a piece of shit. <laughs> because you have the worst opinions on the planet. There we go. So, yeah, he's just laying down the law. Now, somebody actually asked a very interesting question, and I actually really appreciate this question. I think it's a great question. It's, it's so good. They asked me, but do you think that Echo's advantage or Limit Liquid's advantage caused them to win? And the answer to that is, I don't know. And the problem is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. If we knew for a fact that it was like, yes, that's the reason why they won then this race, would, sorry, the, the conversation would be totally boring. And if it took Echo a day later, then we have no idea. Nobody can know, but it creates this contention that is completely unnecessary. True. Sure. That's all I'm saying. We can't know, just eliminate uncertainty. Yeah, and it's like, you've got to, like, think about it. If you're from Echo, you've got to be, like, really disappointed. Like, it would suck. Liquid played better. You don't realize that you weren't truly watching the race. Both teams are Bs, but Liquid outplayed them this tier. Well, if Liquid outplayed them, then they absolutely have ownership of that. Like, I I, 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 I don't know that. Like, What's contention? It's like, you don't really know who would have won if it was for global release. Would Liquid still have won? Would we have won? The thing is, you will never know. Because it's not a fair race. And that's the problem. There should, every time there's a winner, there should be a winner. Otherwise, it's, it starts this discussion uh, that uh, did it matter, did it not? It's having European fans, NA fans uh, being toxic on social media and whatnot. And it starts this clash and this toxic environment around the race. Um, which is a problem. <clears throat> Usually a lot of the race happened whenever I was asleep or streaming, so I'm not sure. Doesn't this race come up, uh, conversation come up every World first race, first race? No, it usually doesn't. Because, well, Echo has beaten them the last three times, and then the time before that, I think Liquid killed it so much earlier that you couldn't even take that head start into account. Hey, thank God you didn't read chats much during the race, Mike. It was horrible. Um, I mean, the, the chat is always bad during the race towards first. Uh, Thankfully, we're not, like, reading chat uh, when we're playing. Um, we're just focusing on playing the game, uh, of course. We're not allowed to read chat in the first place. And honestly, reading chat does nothing good for you, especially um, after Liquid kills it, because then everyone comes out and starts, like, flaming and say, loser, blah, blah, blah. But I've been doing it so much, and I think nowadays you want to be a streamer and you have, like, Know, big viewership and whatnot. You need to be able to take it. As um, sad as, as that sounds, you need to be ready to receive toxicity. Um, because unfortunately, it's part of it. You really just need to learn not to give a fuck. Because if you take it personal, you will just dig yourself down into a deep hole. Um, and it will have no... It will just affect you um, negatively and you'll feel sad about it and things like that. So you need to have a bit of a heart, like you need to have hard skin. <clears throat> um, that's super important. The thing is, I get so much positivity, you know, I have a lot of uh, good people in my chat and whatnot. So like, why, sh bro, why should I give a fuck about someone who has some random avatar uh, on Twitter blaming me and then you go into his profile and the only thing he does is being negative and retweets giveaways. Why should I take that person's flame to my heart? 
Like, why should I care about that? You know, like, some people might get sad if just keep reading negative comments, and understandably so. Um, but it can be very easy to focus on the negative stuff when you have so much positive stuff. It can be very easy to, like, see 50 positive comments, then there's one really negative one, and then that one affects you the most. Why are people like that? I have been like that too. I've learned to like grow out of it and away from it. And you're just way happier when you don't give a shit about what people think about you. You probably have good friends, good family members that love you. Why should you care about what some guy on the internet that doesn't even know you says about you? You shouldn't. As soon as you learn that, you'll just be way happier. <clears throat> if that's the case, delete Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it affects you negatively and social media has a negative impact on you, then I would also recommend that probably don't be on social media that much if it affects you in a bad way. <clears throat> but I enjoy Twitter. I mean, there's also good content on there. Um, just important not to let the negative stuff affect you. Yeah, my family and friends flames me harder than any random on the internet. Well, usually when family member or something like, that's also one thing, right? Like <laughs> flaming you, I think they just, most cases want the best for you. Um, and I would say that in any working environment, you know, you can either have a person that's like beating around the bush, trying to be as nice as possible, or you can have on someone say like, bro, the work you did here fucking sucks. You did it better last time and you can do this and this instead. I want more direct people in my life. I don't want people to uh, like lick my ass. Now, that's how I feel. I want like real people around me. <clears throat> Yeah, let's continue the video. Let's get it. Like a lot, also has less pull count on the boss as one. I, I, all I'm saying is that did they have less pulls on every single boss? Because like the last boss isn't the only boss that matters. It's only the boss. It's but it is the boss that matters. Not even most. following Maris. Uh, and also, no, this is not, is not. I follow Maris. This is Asmund Gold. Look, Asmund not following me. Not following Maris. Dirty boy. Necessarily indicative of, uh, like, quality, right? You could try different strategies, they didn't work, uh, etc. <laughs> pull count means shit. I think pull count does matter. It's not that it doesn't matter. I think it's a very good point. All I'm saying is that... That's true, he's not following Liquid either. <laughs> if you don't have people playing on an uneven playing field. You give people two unequal advantages, and you will always have this. I think it's disappointing. Yeah, true, true. He, he liked my he liked my Twitter list. <laughs> you can track uh, the time it took to clear the entire raid. Liquid beat them on time of completion. He doesn't even follow uh, OTK time. Network on Twitch. <laughs> of completion? Well, if that's the case, then that's different. <laughs> Liquid had less on the last two bosses, which are arguably the most important. That's a really good point. And uh, this is what uh, what Max said about it. Uh, I think the tuning in this raid was made for the entire Mythic community instead of Race to World First, which is probably a step in the right direction for WoW. Uh, w for Max for saying this. I totally agree with him. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, however, my official take on it is I wish it was slightly harder, which I'll elaborate on tomorrow. But goddamn, uh, is this better than the overtuned bosses needing to be nerfed all the time? I agree on this. I think for the general public, this is way better. We don't want bosses to be a hard wall and then it needs crazy nerfs. I don't think that's good for the game in general. Uh, seeing it from our side, it's, if there's no global release, it's good for us if there is a wall and Liquid cannot progress and we catch up. Or the competition at Race World First and us winning. 
it's good if that happens. But what we want is a raid tier that requires no crazy nerfs and tuning, but a bit harder. So I, 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 I kind of have the same take on it. I think for the general player base, this is better, uh, but they can tune it up a, a bit, you know, make it a little bit harder. That will be, uh, <clears throat> that will be better in my opinion. Um, and then obviously I would love to have a global release, right? That's kind of like my, my take on it. Time thing. Yeah, we'll have to see what he has to say. I think easier raids is definitely a good thing. I think they have made the raid tiers way too hard, and they're catering to such a small fraction of a percentage of an audience, and it's just... I, I think that, uh, again, like people's interest in the game is a reflection of that. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just... I, I, I hope they continue making easier raids. While you're not wrong, Truth is participating. Uh, everyone participating, new NA got earlier reset, and they still race, which made EU wins more impressive oh it definitely made it more impressive absolutely it did but all i'm saying is that um um uh fuck. <laughs> uh we got it oh they should start the raid at the same time <laughs> oh my god dude oh my god dude. He just lost all focus, dude. Yeah, they, they should start like... the raid. They, they, yeah, like, if they both started the raid at the same time, I, I think that would be good. Yeah, uh, that would be good. Hopefully they do that next time. All right, anyway. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if it was true. Uh, Baco, uh, Degari. I, I think that was it. <clears throat> uh, that was it for... Wait. I can link it as well for those who wanted it. <laughs> there was the video.